Oh, hello, everybody. Everybody, hello. What is going on? Welcome to another one of Copy That's Whetstone Wednesdays, the only Whetstone Wednesday in existence in the United States of America, in the Northern Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, uh, in the solar system, in the Milky Way galaxy, near the Andromeda galaxy. This is the only one. Cosmologists have proven it. Now, what is a Whetstone Wednesday, you may ask, uh, as you're naked, sweaty, and drinking <laughs> in the night? <laughs> that is a question that philosophers have been asking for many, many years. So every Wednesday-ish, you know, two or three times a month, we like to get together, Rod and I, sometimes Alex, sometimes Lindsay, sometimes not me, and we review Patreon supporter copy um, on our website, uh, rather, on our Discord, we have an entire channel called Exclusive Critiques. And when we do one of these little streaming mabobs, we put out a call and go, hey, we're going to we're gonna review your copy. And then people post it, and then we do that. And usually, we're very ambitious, and typically, we uh, don't get through everything that we're trying to do. So, Rod, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I had a lovely-ish Thanksgiving. Um, and now I'm back home, back in the swing of things. Good, good. Yeah, I, I, I stayed here for Thanksgiving for the first time in a few years. And I didn't cook for the first time in a few years. So it was a very weird experience for me. Okay. Um, sorry, I just read the notification we just got. Um, so that should be fun. Um, you got a notification? We got a notification. Oh, oh my God. Uh, Alex is drunk and he's going to be joining us later. <laughs> that Look means that, that you, person <laughs> who wrote the copy, you're probably going to get his full British anger. Full British anger. Yeah, it, it, by that I mean he's going to probably say things like, I don't think this copy is very good. <laughs> I think this copy could be perhaps a, a little bit better. <laughs> You might consider improving it just a tad. Whenever I think of drunk British people, for some reason, I think of them just speaking in that Oliver Twist voice. Yeah. Please, sir, may I have some more? Yeah. Absolutely. I um, Before we get started, I actually did want to share something. I just invested the, I think it was like $1,200, $1,500 to get the full Todd Brown swipe file. Wow. Like... There is like five of these binders of just promos and copy from the modern and ancient era. And I'm looking forward to going through it all. And so I don't recommend that anybody spend that much money on copy. But I will say that of all the books that I have ever purchased, uh, I've learned the most from books that contain copy. Another really good example is this one that mm -hmm. I'm a huge, huge fan of. But basically, any compendium of copy that you can get your hands on, I highly recommend doing it. Now, realistically, how long is it going to take you to, one, actually start going through that, and two, you not finish it, but like start digesting that in like a real way? So, I mean, typically when I'm on the daily practice, mm -hmm. uh, what I will do is I will read a promo per day. Mm -hmm. And that will usually take me between an hour to three hours per day. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do is I'll typically like do it like during breakfast or like do it in patches during my morning routine. And I'll do that before I sit down to do anything else. Now, how long is it going to take me to get through the whole thing? I don't know. I'm probably going to jump around a lot because I'm looking for inspiration for a very particular project that I'm working on. Ooh. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But what, what is new and novel that you are working on? Um, so what are we doing? Um, actually, it's a really slow period. It's it's weird. So end of the year, everyone's kind of in vacation mode, sort of, or like doesn't want to start new work, because if you start new work after Thanksgiving, you're going to end up working on it over Christmas, and no one really wants to work on it over Christmas. So on our side, there isn't a lot of new stuff. Um, but also on the Nike side of things, none of them want to give us stuff, because that's going to be meetings and you know, organizing stuff on their side. And so I am just kind of coasting right now. Um, I did some fun things for like, um, 
um, MLB is one of our clients and we had like an open brief across the agency um, for some ideas for something that they're going to be doing in the future. And so I threw together some stuff for that, even though I'm not technically on it, um, which is kind of fun. Rod Satterwhite, Major League Baseball copywriter. Major League. So that's the funny thing is like I know jack shit about baseball so in order to do this i pulled one of our residents who played baseball i was like okay tell me everything you know and so we sat there and we ended up submitting some ideas together because he was like a great resource and he's also a copywriter and so we were able to go back and forth um and and so it was very very funny i was like i know nothing about this which is both an advantage um but also a gigantic disadvantage well i mean you've had the experience many times before of being thrust into a job where you didn't know diddly dick about like what you were writing about and then just had to immerse yourself. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's like, I I'm the guy right now where it's like, okay, we have a brand new thing. No one knows anything about Let's throw rod on it. He knows how to research shit. I typically, when I don't know anything, I throw my rod at it too. It never hurts. I just ask polite. you very politely to do stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh we got a question uh where do you find these promos uh, i'm presuming you don't mean the ones that are in these books because mm. i imagine i'll find them when i open the book no uh the best way to find copy is to like open your emails click the links that are in your emails go into facebook you know ad library look for brands that do direct response you know sign up for a bunch of email lists and you know, turn ad block off. Actually look at copy. That's where you find promos. Yeah. Is this actually live or a replay? I think it might be a replay. It's definitely a replay. Definitely a replay. <laughs> so I actually, I have queued up a bunch of stuff for us to look at. And I think the first thing that we can look at, I think you are going to be way better to talk about than me. So we have... Before us, lo and behold, a Upwork proposal wow. that has not been working for somebody. Okay, let's see it. So I'm, I've zoomed in so that everybody else can see it. I'm also going to, I'm going to do the stream like this today, mm. like a like a like a video gamer. So, <laughs> like I'm, I'm going to pretend like I'm playing Minecraft the entire time, and I'm just bracing you... myself. Have you seen copy. that World of Warcraft episode of South Park? I have not seen that. Oh man, go go watch that, please. At some point, it's thirty minutes of your life, you will. The references you will make are priceless. Um, I'll read this one then. Okay. Um, this is this is this person have a name. Do you know who, who this was? Um, let me let me double check this. Oh, I think this is. I think his name is Simon. Simon. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong though. My sister used to date a Simon. Fun fact. It's many years ago. Probably not the same guy. Probably not. Let's. It's probably not. Um. Let's see. So Simon says, <laughs> "These below are some of my Upwork proposals, which haven't been doing too well. Keep in mind that I only apply to jobs that suit me. Great, and which are only a few hours old. Pretty good. Um. Tried using Warren's ISVA method. I recommend that." Um, and I already have some credibility on my Upwork account with two five-star reviews and my copy portfolio uploaded. Cool. So job description. Um, I presume this is the job they're applying to. Um, so do you want me to skip this or do you want to I'm just going to skim it? it real quick. Yeah. So okay. direct response copywriter, um, crafting sales pages, ad copy, video scripts, creative concepts for paid social ads. So the kinds of work they're asking for are full sales pages, Add probably PPC, video scripts, and other paid social ads. Um, yada, 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 key responsibilities, copy that converts. Um, looks like the product is a vitamin shot energy. Do, 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 scripts, whatever. Okay, requirements are proven experience, um, ideally in health, having a portfolio. Okay, basically that's it. Cool. So I was totally wrong about his name. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, the other Constantine. Yes. Um, okay, so the proposal. Hi, I'm Constantine. I see you're looking for a skilled DR copywriter help 
write high or to write high converting sales pages, emails, ads, and more for your health business? If so, I can help. This is some raw sales uh, sales page copy I wrote for a book that was recently launched. Um, link. This is a Facebook ad I've written. Link. And this is some Amazon copy I've written for a health product. Um, regarding the sales page ad copy, will I get a chance to, to collaborate with your design team to ensure the design and creatives match your copy? Okay. I have a few like immediate things that jump out at me with this, yes. but I, I would like you to do this. I, I'm platforming you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Constantine has done some things really well. Um, linking examples to your work, always fantastic. Makes it very easy for people to see. This is the kind of thing they can expect, this kind of quality or whatever. Um, we don't need to click these links, but make sure this is some of your best work or prettiest work, even if it's not in the exact field. Just to, the point is to show them that you can do the job, not that for like that specific niche per se. So, you know, impress before going like with relevance. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't start off with like, I, there's a degree to which it's good to kind of reiterate what they've said, um, but don't do it at such sort of like exact in such exactitude, I guess, saying, I see you're looking for a skilled person to write all these things, yada, yada, yada is unnecessary. Um, like you can lead with like, like, like summarize these things into what the actual problem is, which is that across the, all of their business, they're in need of copy to help drive sales. And so you could say something about writing copy that converts or whatever sort of generic this, but acknowledge what they're really asking for and then move on to the next thing which is going to be demonstrating how you're um different but relevant as alex might say yeah uh, I, i've we're... adopted that too yeah. i if i were to rewrite this and this is how i would write for myself which means in all likelihood you person watching this should probably not listen to me mm. um first off this is a statement that's not a question but it ends with a question mark Yes. And so I know from sentence one that, okay, I'm going to be dealing with somebody that might be having some grammatical issues that I might have to be contending with uh, somebody who's not doing stuff in a very, how should I say, um, well proofread kind of way. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. So from sentence one, I know immediately like, okay, this person's down a peg in my mind. So there's that. Second one, if so, I can help. I can help is, how should I say, the cop-out of the 21st century. I can help. Of course you can help. You can help me by taking out my trash. You can help me by, like, walking my dog. Like, okay, all of these things would be helpful for me. But it's not specific to what they're asking for. What are they asking for? They're asking for high converting sales pages if so i'm the person that can get you the conversions your business needs yes. there's some mm. copy for you to launch off with that is more specific it speaks to what they're asking for without like directly referencing what they're what they're saying in the proposal and it makes you seem like a boss so say that I, one more thing on that too I registered the grammatical issue, but I almost felt like it wasn't even worth addressing because to me, the problem with this, with these first two sentences isn't even the grammar. It's yeah. that the whole purpose of this first sentence is to set up Constantine be able to saying, if so, I can help. Like it only exists to, to justify that because he wants to say that, but there's no world like you, because you know the answer to the question, they just told you what they were looking for. So asking them what they're looking for or saying, are you looking for this? If you are, I can help. Like, there's, like why? We, everyone knows, everyone who applies knows what they want. So like, why are you saying, like, if you're applying to the thing, presumably the presumption is that you can help. So like, wh why do you need to say that at all? Um, and to me, that's more of like a, um, be a confidence thing, a, um, you don't know how to present yourself or you don't know what sort of value you bring other than being able to answer the obvious thing that they're asking for. And so you kind of like, reframe their thing up front again so that you can say oh yeah it's me and like you need to be you of course you need to do that in some way but like it's not that's you can't just do that so literally because it looks weird like duh 
someone should never respond that way to copy your friend. Yeah. This, uh, like, it's kind of like you said, like, all, all of this is a life support system for this. And yeah. this is not worth keeping alive. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to pull the plug on this. Like who's going to like read like if like oh I can help and be like oh yes finally someone who wants to help me. At last. <laughs> <laughs> My helpers come. No, like people are looking for people to surprise and delight them, people that actually very clearly seem like they're going to knock the job out of the park. Yeah. Now, for a direct response copywriter, what does that entail? Like if, when somebody says I would like to hire a direct response copywriter. What does that person look like? That person is going to write in such a way that grabs and arrests attention immediately and doesn't let go of it. This is going to be a person that understands like how to negotiate, not only how to keep a person reading and engaged, but also like understands like how effectively you are going to be making claims and providing proof for those claims. Guys, when you send a proposal, I don't care if it's Upwork or if it's cold email or if it's a job application, you're making a claim here and you're backing that shit up with proof here. One of the most common mistakes I see people making is not understanding that linkage. You are providing samples as proof that you are going to be a boss. You are going to knock this project out of the park. And this is not making that claim really and this is not really tying it back to a very specific, very relevant piece of proof or claim related to the proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Should we move on to the next one or? Uh, one more thing, because <clears throat> okay. we might be able to skip the next one too. And this is a little bit, um, this is going to really require some thinking on his part to do. You need to like have a bridge between like the I can help or hey, it's me and showing giving examples of your work. Um, either sort of contextualizing what this sales page copy is doing for for something or using it to illustrate a kind of point or something, or just having a paragraph being like just roughly being like, you know, because they have all those requirements. Like I they're looking for someone who's experienced experienced or something. And so you could say, look, I've worked for X number of years or whatever, sold X number of dollars of shit. Um and this is my background. This is what I'm interested in. Would love to make a connection. Have some sort of CTA in there. Um, like, please reach out if whatever. And then under that, just have a line that's like, here are some examples of recent work, for example. Um, and then, again, like labeling, like what you've done here, sales page copy, Facebook ads, Amazon copy, et cetera, um, just to give it a little bit more context and not just have your message effectively be, hi, I'm Constantine. I can help you. Here are ex examples of my copy. Um, yeah. And then don't ask this question at the bottom like this. Um, I understand that this is supposed to be like a um, value add kind of thing or, or like not value add, but like you're trying to demonstrate that you're the kind of person who thinks about collaborating with design teams, which is a good thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not the first question you should be asking. That's yeah. maybe like a deeper question after you've piqued their interest in the first place. No one's going to read that and think, oh, this person has asked about collaborating with my designer. I need to hire them before they've already assessed how good you are at the copy part. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good note. Like in ISVA, the A stands for ask a question, right? I think so. Yeah. And so like, what is a question that's going to be like, really encourage, you know, somebody to respond? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be this. And you can get like, you can also, you can use the question as a flex too. So for example, you could say something like, are you looking to scale from, or like what are something along the lines of like, what are your sales goals? Or are you looking to hit six figures for the first time? Are you looking to scale from six figures to seven figures or something based off the industry or how much you think this company is making? And then you're showing attentiveness to the actual financial situation and the sales numbers and whatever, which people will enjoy and might engage you on. And uh, again, Constantin, uh, these are all just like very many approaches to the same problem that you have tried to crack here with this particular mm -hmm. proposal. Yeah. Um, and really, it just comes down to like, you know, you're applying for a direct response kind of job. So write it with more direct response in mind. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, everything that we've been talking about is to help you think about that. So, yeah. Oh, hey, buddy. All right, boys. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? It's Hello. Drunk Alex. I am a bit drunk. I have to admit, I'm sorry. It is totally all right. Uh, are you sorry, thing. though? No. Are, you, are you sorry for me? No. I've also never used a computer drunk, which is quite fun. So, I, I just realized. I'm going to be quiet unless I think of something that I can inject a value in, and then I'll be uh, helpful. I, I cannot wait to hear you inject a value in anything. Great. <laughs> um, I just looked at all the other proposals that mm -hmm. um, Constantin sent, mm -hmm. and I they're all basically the same. They all suffer okay. from the same issues. Okay, I will free value for this one. Make sure you proofread your shit. You use the wrong your in there, which Google Docs has pointed out. Um, but then also, one, good to say to use names when you see them on these things. Um, but then don't ask the bottom question about ongoing long-term type of work. Yeah. So, Obviously, it's fine for you to care about that, the money, income, consistency, whatever. Great, fantastic. Everyone knows that. But that's not relevant to them. Make sure the questions you're asking are things that they're going to actually want to engage you on. Yes. Oh, God. Rod, thank you for for saying the thing that was in my brain. Like, what I was saying about the question that you were asking earlier mm -hmm. is also a problem here, which is these questions that you're asking feel self-interested. They feel yeah. self-serving, as opposed to what you should be asking, which is framing stuff in such a way that feels like it's going to be, that you're asking questions that are going to be beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. So... Those are the kinds of questions that you want to be asking. I, I don't know what's been going on here, but I'm going to say something. <laughs> today, I, okay, right. So today I was talking to our sales team and we were reviewing their a sales call they had. And one thing that we said, I said was that they went straight into the, the, the people on the other end said something. They said like, oh, we're really interested in this thing. And the salesperson instead of saying like, oh, that's amazing. Like we've actually got something that's perfect for that. Instead of saying that, they instead said like, oh, and what kind of contract type are you looking for? Like they went straight into another question. And I was like, acknowledge the thing that that person said they cared about first yeah. before going straight into what you want to talk about because it, it just makes a better relationship. What I was going to say there is that that's the same thing. Like you don't, don't immediately talk about what you want to talk about next. They, you may care about long-term work. They don't want someone who's going to work long-term necessarily. They want their problem fixed straight away. So talk about that, right? Like that's what I'm with that. Rod, don't be cheeky, man. Don't take advantage of me right now. I've still, I've said I'd come on, and I've come on. It wouldn't be the first time. And I'm only going to be be useful. I don't know what that was. I'm going to be useful when I can be useful, and that was you, that, right? Alex, you are a supremely useful man. Yes, you are. Thank you. All right. Next. I uh, I just wish we had Lindsay on to round everybody out, but she's deep in a hole, and I I don't know when she's going to come out. Have, have you spoken to her lately? Yes, okay. and she's just absolutely slammed uh -huh. launching uh, Brown Ridge. So, have you gotten the sense of are are things is this slammed because just launching a new business slammed, or are things going well, or? Well, on one of the things that I've been trying to get her to do is like, you know, because she's she's basically launching an e-letter and a guru behind that e-letter. Mm -hmm. And the she has been getting leads like people that are very familiar with this guru at just ridiculously low CPLs. Like it's some of the best CPLs I've ever seen uh -huh. ever in my career. And so. Her ad campaign's going great. Like, you know, there's a bunch of people signing up for a list. Um, but there's a problem. They have no way to monetize them yet. So they're just like, when you are building a list, you are mm -hmm. throwing money into a hole. And ideally, you have something to sell immediately to that, the, that group of people that you are bringing onto the list. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't have that yet because yeah. of just natural limitations. Like the guru, the business just started. Yeah. And so uh, she basically, now that they're getting thousands of leads, they have to figure out like, oh fuck, how do I monetize this? And basically, you know, 
all of that responsibility falls down to her. That's fun. Now, combine that with the fact that, you know, she's working with web devs and designers and basically her team of people are in like, you know, Ukraine, Romania, like Eastern Europe. And so her only time to really work with her team on all the assets that she needs for this business are like from two to four. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. So that's why that's why she's hasn't been on these streams recently. Yeah, that's a good problem to have, though. I'm happy that. You know. Oh yeah, no, she's she's killing it. But it's like you know, every time I talk to her, I'm like, "Have you cracked monetization yet? Have you cracked monetization yet?" Like, Stress. Stress. and so I've been just like tossing ideas in her direction to like try to help. But like, you know, part of the problem is like, you know, she is limited by what the guru is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So she can only do what she can you know, on the marketing side to the best of her abilities. That's when you become the guru. That's that's what I decided to do. <laughs> and now we're here. And started from the bottom. Now we're here. All right. Raj got a haircut as well. What? Yeah, I did. Oh, that looks nice. You got a little fade going on. It looks good. Thank you. Yeah, man. Look fresh. I, 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 I'm actually looking a little bushy right now. Ooh. It's, 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 it's coming in. So I'm actually going to go for the full skullet. You know? <laughs> So Please Sean, go. we have we have an anime commission, like that was done. That I haven't shared with you guys yet, because I said to them, you need to make Sean more bald because they gave you too much hair. And I was like, cut that shit down. So I'm waiting to show you guys that. Okay. But I mean, it's so like really like the only obstacle of us getting <laughs> anime avatars is the fact that they made me too hairy. <laughs> It was like it was like a black like cover on your head, and I thought, well, that's. Not... I was like, he's got a bit, and it looks good, but I don't want to have like a, I don't want to mislead, you know. Yeah, people, yeah, we don't want to mislead. People are buying for my baldness, <laughs> and we don't want to get sued. <laughs> False advertising. Exactly. So, all right, let's 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 continue giving value. Let's do all this. Right. Oh, gotta lean in for this. All right. Sorry, that was the oldest man grown I could manage. <laughs> so maybe I'm in the uh, target demo here. So this is a sales letter. Uh, the audience is women, often mothers, not <laughs> mostly mothers, but they are often mothers. <laughs> sure. it's, okay. a recurring, it's a recurring thing. Their problems uh, involve that they struggle with anxiety and self-love. They're unhappy, feel like failures. There's a lot of self-loathing. At work, they can't speak their mind and feel unseen. Love life non-existent. Try to change often backfires. Now, what do they yearn for? They want to feel comfortable in their skin. They want to be a good wife and mother. They want to feel like they have control over themselves, their habits, and emotions. Uh, I mean, this is why Valium was invented. So, it makes sense. <laughs> Offer. This is an 11-day email course with exercises, videos, and explanations mm -hmm. on how they can initiate long-lasting change Feel a little vague. Free themselves from self-hatred. All right. Anxiety and negative behaviors. Got it. Um, okay. The funnel. They opt in for a lead magnet and then get redirected to a special offer. So wait. Hold on. Really quick. If the offer... Oh, hold on. So sales page, you get an 11-day email course. And then during this email course they're getting an opt-in to another list? But you're I, on a list. I think maybe the lead magnet puts... They may, may, I, okay, how I first interpreted that was like they opt in for the lead magnet and they're on. That is the offer. I, I, I actually don't know. I assume that they were get, they were do, the all that stuff was in the 11-day course and then during that course they're then upselling to something else. Uh, but I mean, like that doesn't make any sense. Do they mean that they they're on a list already, and th is that is the funnel talking? That first half of the funnel sentence is that talking historically? Like they've already done the lead magnet, and now they're getting redirected. 
if you don't want this to happen to you, check out the Ultimate Guide to Marketing Strategy. Copy that's one and only course for <laughs> refining and developing a marketing strategy that works. So it's you good. never run into a problem where you say something nonsensical like this ever again. It's good. And you know what? I, I'll say this because like, I don't, I don't care about being modest. That's my favorite thing that we've done. I was so proud of that. Like it actually explains so well. It was all right. It was okay. I like it. I could do. I actually, um, I think my favorite thing that we've done, even though it's clearly not optimal, is the Patreon. Like, well, yeah, oh, that's yeah. Well, cheating. Yeah. That's loads of shit. <laughs> yes, it's like three fucking years of shit. We can't say that's a thing. That's like a. You, you mean know? like the choice to have a Patreon is your favorite thing we've done? No, no, no. Like legitimately, like. What we've managed yeah. to build on the Patreon, I think, is better than almost every other creator that I've seen that has a Patreon. So that's like saying your favorite period of history is the 1500s to now. It's like that's well, not. Yeah. That's not a <laughs> period. That's the whole is. fucking that's thing. That's when I was born. <laughs> it's the best. Penicillin was made during that time. Shakespeare was during that time. America <laughs> happened during that time. Of course, oh. it was the best. Napoleon. Yes. Yeah. Fuck well, that, that movie sucked. By that way. fucking, I've not seen it, but it looks shit because Napoleon, he was meant to have charisma. That was a whole point. Joaquin Phoenix was not the right choice for that role. I don't even care that it's inaccurate. It's just, he was meant to have charisma. Here's what makes that movie worth seeing, but maybe like when it comes out on streaming. Um, the Battle of Austerlitz. But that's bullshit. I watched the clip and that's not how it happened. And that's fine. It doesn't matter how it happened. It's a that, spectacle and it's amazing. And I don't yes. care about historical accuracy. Fine. I, that's fine. Yeah, that is fine. But fucking why is the jet? Why is he there shouting to the cavalry? Oh, now cut off their escape. That's not how battles happen. They have fucking buglers and, and fucking runners who know that shit already. It really annoyed me. Let's Arr get on with the copy. Shut up, Rod. <laughs> you like anime. You're a fucking nerd. No, I don't. <laughs> anyway. Step one. Download module one of the fly course for free. Thank you so much for signing up. I'm confident. Oh, oh well, one thing really quick. I'm so sorry. I may, I think I might have figured it out. So scroll back up to the uh, offer or the okay. funnel. I, what I think it might be is that they opt into a lead magnet, lead magnet and after they register, they then get bumped to another page that is this special offer. Let me put it this way. If your client has to take more than 10 seconds to figure out what the fuck you're talking about when it comes to what you're wanting to do, you done a bad. That's true. <laughs> we can't like we haven't been able to we haven't been able to figure this bit out. We haven't even gotten to the copy yet. <laughs> ah, yeah. Anyway, so um, I'm guessing this is the beginning of like what people see on the landing page of mm -hmm. the sales letter. I guess. Probably. Zale? Where would that be? Zale in our in our Discord did this. Are you are you on? Are you here? Do you exist? Can you talk to us? Somebody start like light a candle and begin a seance. We need to bring this person here to answer some motherfucking questions. Is this an email into a sales page? I I don't no, know what I, I am on, Alex. No, no, no. I am convinced that it's what I just said because look, it says thank you so for for signing up. That email is going to arrive in about X minutes. In the meantime, so this is like the registration confirmation page that is the additional offer. Ah, uh, so this is like the thank you page for signing up to the lead magnet. Yes. Right. And okay. then we're trying to sell you, sell you some other shit. All right. Okay. Okay. See, I am smart. Uh, we all knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you could also translate bad copy to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. don't be mean. I'm not being mean. Hmm. But yeah. So step one, this. Step two, this. This is the email. Mm -hmm. And then we go into this, which is, I'm presuming the page that people, like you said, Rod, land on after they've signed up for the lead magnet. Yes. So based on a new groundbreaking paradigm in psychology and neuroscience, 
watch your anxiety and unwanted habits melt away in just 11 days. Not terrible. Yeah, not, not unique. Bad. Even Definitely if you useful. think you lack motivation and self-discipline. Hmm. His, okay. This is my... Right. What's the context of how someone is, is seeing this for the first time? Did it explain the context above, or was it just joined a lead magnet? I they, Presumably the lead magnet is related to the motivations or whatever. I mean, it doesn't say what that was, so it, it would be helpful to know that. So. It shifts the paradigm of what the the complex should be mm -hmm. like if they is this something they've already they've already come into into contact with like is anxiety and unwanted habits specific enough or have they said it's because they've come from a certain place come in that's in my thank you i have dinner coming because i'm thank, wow thank you very much Ooh la la. i could get home drunk and have someone bring me dinner yeah i live a good life <laughs> Oh, girl, madame, right Don't here. Tell him, thank you for us. <laughs> thank you, Callum. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna mute myself while I eat, and you guys can. T no, we we want that. Uh, we want the chewing sound like in our ears, like in go the off, king. go off, king. This looks so good as well. I'm okay, so it, quick observation. This is a very conventional headline formula. Watch your blank pain point go away in specific amount of time some separation even without common thing that prevents you from making this problem go away it, that's that's the formula that's the template for a very 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 common i dare i say cliched headline complex now even though it's cliche it still works but here's the thing i don't know what people have seen before this mm -hmm. to make me understand why or how this could be effective in context. Now, it was brought up before that mentioning eating disorders walk a very fine line in health copy, and that's true, but it's a very fine line in health copy depending upon where you're, what channel you're using to get eyeballs onto the copy. For example, if you have a Facebook ad that links to a landing page and the first thing that the landing page says is cure your eating disorder in like 11 days, mm -hmm. oh man, is Facebook going to ban your account forever and you will never be able to sell on Facebook ever again. Now, that gets a little more flexible if you are getting people from Facebook to an advertorial to a squeeze page and then in the welcome sequence that people sign up for on that squeeze page, you're sending people to a promo. And then if people like buy that promo, then they see this. Like if there's like that many steps removed, well, then you can say a lot more shit. You know, you're, you just have the permission to do so because Facebook's spiders are not looking at it. So that's typically how you can get away with more aggressive assertions and claims and copy and stuff that's more, how should I say, doesn't really scale well on the networks. Um, it just really depends on like where it falls in the funnel and like how many steps it takes a person to get there. Now, because I don't know that context, I can't really tell anyone like what I think about this. I, I think it's fine. Again, I think it's it's mm -hmm. useful, but like I do question like how well anxiety you know get rid of anxiety and unwanted habits scales yeah at I, the very least put some time in punching it up like things like if instead of saying even if you think you lack motivation or self-discipline you could say if you have a history of these things or something like that like make it more personal make it more whatever it's yeah it's even like give it a frame so like instead of just being blasé about it and direct, you can even say like, you know, um, scared, you know, scared of going out with work colleagues, like stop, just shit like that, where it gives it some kind of, it dimension, no, or maybe not dimensionalizes because that word is controversial, but you know, it sets you within a story to say, this is the, these are the feelings you have. 
going out with work colleagues, mm-hmm. going to dinner, not knowing what to do with your career, like something like that. It, it sets it a bit, makes it a bit more poignant. Um, I think you can take these two points and make them something specific that's actually going to resonate with someone. Yeah. You know, I am. Um, I'm reminded, Rod, of the very mm-hmm. first sales letter you and I ever looked at together on stream. Um, mm-hmm where the sales that are brand new knees in 90 days. Yeah. And that starts with three very pointed questions. And they're so specific that there's almost no mention of the symptoms at all. It's all about like what the symptoms cause or the outcome of them in your life. And that's what I think is missing from this bit. You know, I think that like really paying attention to like what Alex was saying, like what these cause you to suffer from rather than you suffer from these one useful way of helping people think about that i found is don't talk think about them as like i guess symptoms and diseases but more so like consequences and so what consequences does your reader face because of their condition or because of the thing you're trying to help them fix um and if you go there then it's like okay well what does it mean for someone if they have anxiety what are things they have to deal with that you or I may not have to? Okay, then let's talk about those things. Yeah, I think that's a very good way of framing it. Um, if you're looking for a way to get out of this never ending cycle, the fly program is for you. Anxiety and depression, constant worrying. I don't understand what this is doing. Eating disorders, unwanted habits, drug use. So the fly program is for you. Then how is this relating to this? It's not. Yeah. So there's there's a bit of incoherence there. These anxieties and habits may show up differently for everyone, but at their foundation, the roots are all the same. They're all they are all down to a misunderstanding of the human mind and how we work. And once we learn how not to be afraid of our own experience, everything changes. What? Well. Yeah. Hmm? This just feels bland ass, man. You know, the, it's it's very telly. It's not very showy. You know, it's it's not very emotional. It's very abstract. I, I think, to me, it sounds like the reason that's happening is because they're trying to do too much too quickly. Okay. You don't need, they did not need to bring up the fly program at that point. But because they have, then it's like, you feel the need to like, justify the program and now you're talking about this program bouncing between like anxieties and like trying to deepen the pain points so you can like then bring the relief later on but now we're mixing in this other like sort of salesy messaging it's also yeah it's also when you i find when you bring in a a thing to blame i guess i'd call it so you know this the blame here is going on a misunderstanding of the human mind and how we work like that's so vague as to like it, it, it doesn't make me believe that, oh, that is the thing to blame. Yeah. If you, you know, I mean, I wouldn't put this in a sales letter necessarily because it's, it's very specific. But if you were to say, like, you know, it's down to um, the damaged relationship with your parents or something like that, you know, at least that's, like, specific. That's enough for me to hold on to to be like, oh, shit, that really, re- that I, I understand that. This isn't enough to understand because it's, like, a misunderstanding of the human mind, how we work. That's something you're blaming and saying this is the problem here. Yeah. That's not a problem I find myself... I, I'm not, you know, awake at night thinking about the misunderstanding of the human mind and I wish I could understand my mind. I'm thinking, God, I hate my my, my mom, you know? Like, that's what I'm thinking about. That isn't a Freudian slip. I saw you both smile. I'm just saying, <laughs> generally, you need to blame something specific that you can that your reader is going to be like, yes, I understand that so much and I don't feel like that's doing it for me right now. Yeah. It's... I agree 100%. Mm-hmm. I, I, listen, there are only three instances where you should really reveal the program or the product early on in a any sort of long-form sales letter. By long-form, I mean anything longer than a 1,000 words. One, they already want the product. Like, they're just itching for a reason to buy the product. Two they haven't bought the product and they don't really want the product, but they are looking for like some reason to try it out. So like, that would be like your direct offer kind of lead, you know, kind of like what we just did on black Friday, like, Hey, these are the things that we're selling. And right now it's discounted. 
And also, here's why they're great. Okay. Um, and then the only other reason why you would want to actually do, a, like, reveal the product early on in long-form copy is if these people are solution-aware um, and, like, are like they know what your product is. They just haven't bought it yet. And there's a lot of competition. It's a very saturated market. And they're just looking for like some reason why they want to buy your product as opposed to a different one. So those are all sort of like three faces of like the same thing, which is you only want to really reveal the product or the solution in long form copy early on if people are already more aware. Now, that could be the case here, but what I would ask this person in a copy review such as this one is how much copy has a person seen about the fly program before they hit this page? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I th the only to me, the only other exception would be if they already knew the, the guru or the person behind the product, where it's like you have such an inherent trust that anything they bring out is like, oh, I'm going to buy that. But that this this sales letter hasn't gone into that. It's not like said, oh, do you know that X person has, has got something else, you know? What you just said is, was implied by my, my number two reason. There you go. He, yeah. You already said it. You don't even need me. <laughs> we need you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I... I also can tell you that these bullets... Are not working mm -hmm. well for me can you relate to any of the following behaviors you feel insecure about the way you look or the people the way people perceive you and put immense pressure on yourself to be or act in a certain kind of way oh alex disappeared he saw this bullet and he ran away oh god well yeah so, bullet. <laughs> yeah so here this is another, this is a quick tip from Sean. Look at this. Insecure about the way you look or the way people perceive you. And put immense pressure on yourself to be or act in a certain kind of way. That's, that is what is called a compound sentence. It is okay if you're comparing two things. Do you like beans and rice? Well, then, boy, howdy, do we have the solution for you. Well, this isn't working because you're just trying to throw spaghetti at the wall here. And it's obvious. It's very clear that you're just trying to, like, test out every possible thing that you can. But then, ultimately, by doing that, by trying to get everything into this bullet, you get nothing into this bullet. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out one comment in chat really quick. This person has actually outed me. Mm. I've, for years, I've told people that I am looking out because I'm thinking, but actually the answer is that I always have the answers written on the ceiling. It's true. I, I've seen it. Even, even when he hangs out at my house, he tapes like big placards on my ceiling. I still have them. They're up there <laughs> from the last time he was here. So, yeah. so you know, look. You're constantly dreaming up your next excuse for that glass of red. What? Wine. I, I know. I know. That just, that. Yeah. Yeah. So th these bullets aren't working. So what what have we arrived at so far? The headline's not working. The marketing strategy is not working. The lead is not working. The justification is not working. The transition out of the lead is not working, and your bullets are not working. So even, like, we're three pages into this. There's there's nothing for me to really grab onto. So. But you know what? I just want to say something quick. Is You've written some copy, and you've submitted it. So fucking well done, because that's more than most people ever do. So you're already better than 80% of the people. Fantastic that you're actually you. getting it reviewed and looking to improve. So well done, like, seriously. I, I yeah, I, I mean, also we we can I think we can give some like actual value here, irrespective of what they've written. Um, a very like because this sort of copy has been done before. I think we've all 
I don't know if Sean has, but like, I know both Alex and I have worked with the kind of person who sells kinds of products like this, like coaches, wellness, whatever. Um, a very simple way to like set up or like structure at least the lead of this kind of copy is to be like, hey, do you have these like symptoms or whatever or whatever common problem that people have? Kind of like what you've done at the beginning, get into, man, the consequences of this problem sure do suck, don't they? You can't sleep at night. You can't pick up your grandkids, whatever. And boy, have you tried all these really common remedies that don't help that conventional people would prescribe to you. You've gone to the doctor. They can't fix it. You've tried the supplements, yada, yada, yada. And you are a great person and aren't, and then, sorry, and then deepen, go back to the pain points. And man, it sure sucks because things are only going to get worse, right? Then you either cut to the guru or just go towards your solution and be like, well, the reason for all of this, the reason you haven't found success, the reason you're suffering and the future is so grim is because, and then you get into no one understands the thing that we now understand this new paradigm of neuroscience or whatever, yeah. yada, yada, yada. You go into your explanation of that. And because we know this new thing you've never heard of, we developed this new product that we're now introducing. <laughs> and then you go on from there. Um, like the, that's a yeah. very simple way to set up something like this that you could easily apply to, to this um, yeah. course. And I would suggest you try that if you don't know where to start. Yeah. Like on the, <clears throat> the, the way that I like to explain that is that I have a video on the Patreon about this and it was one of my earliest videos. This is from like a couple of years ago um, was you have a very, very common setup, especially in sales letters and um, kind of like long VSLs and things like that, where you have, the unique mechanism of the problem and you have the unique mechanism of the yeah. solution and that basically is like you've got a problem that the, the the prospect recognizes and then the unique mechanism of that problem is you basically point out the reason they have that that they haven't thought of before the one i think that i use as a um and i, I use something really like almost mundane to, to prove that it can happen anywhere i think i use like dog treats so like you've got an old dog or you've got a dog that has joint problems like you want the problem is you know you don't like you see, seeing your dog limp around the unique mechanism of that problem is it's because they're not getting of this th enough of this thing called glucosamine and like the glucosamine um or sorry the unique mechanism of the problem is that it's because their their cells are degenerating that's the unique me mechanism of the problem is like they're limping around loads because their cells are degenerating because they're not getting enough of this um uh, a bone structure basically like they're not getting enough support on their bones the unique mechanism of the solution is glucosamine like that is the thing that solves that problem they're not getting enough structure in their cells and their bones the glucosamine is the unique mechanism of that problem. It's a thing you've never heard of for this this problem you've never heard of, and there's this solution you've never heard of. But these this UMP and this UMS, unique mechanism of the problem and unique mechanism of the solution, together they connect the problem you recognize with the solution you recognize, which is that you know the solution is oh like this means that they will have strong bones and that their joints won't hurt anymore. And it all comes between those two things they've never heard of, and that's exactly what Rod has just explained, which is. You have this problem. I'm going to explain this for you. Here's this other thing you've never heard of, and it's going to make your desire, your dream come true. Like that's that's what it is. That's what fucking 75% of the, the sales letters and sales pages I've ever analyzed do. Yeah. I was actually going to mention that exact same concept, Alex. Um, I think it's a very valuable one that not a lot of people sure. know about or think about. Um, you know, another example of unique mechanism of the problem might be like, you know, so if you're selling like a fat loss product, so the unique mechanism of the problem might itself be um, what causes your body to want to store fat. Recently, one's a successful mechanism of that that I've been seeing is cortisol, the, the you know, the hormone cortisol, the stress hormone that, you know, it has been correlated with like, you know, higher cortisol, more stress, leads to like higher, you know, adiposity, I believe it is called technically. Um, and so uh, the unique, you know, mechanism of the solution that would be like not something that treats your fat, but rather something that treats your cortisol and lowers your stress levels. And that could be anything from like, I don't know, ginseng to a vibrator. Like that, you can sell anything that way as long as you can frame it as like this thing reduces your stress, which reduces your cortisol, which then reduces your fat. And so then you have a headline that's like orgasm your way to, you know, thinness or whatever, orgasm yourself skinny, 
And then all of a sudden, like you sell a million bucks and you're like, oh my God. No, thank you, is Alex, that a thing? for coming up with this unique mechanism of the problem. For <laughs> is that a thing? That I could sell orgasms as a fat loss treatment. <laughs> you're telling me I can enjoy my Hagen dazs and come and the world is right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Let's do that. Anyway, Rod, Rod, you're just deadpan, like stoic about this. Like, what? Why? <laughs> I'm way more laissez faire than I would be. My inhibitions have gone. Let's continue. This is why you don't let 14 year olds drink. <laughs> 12. 12. Um, should we keep on with the sales that or move on to something else? Let's move on. Gotta move on. We've given enough. All right. Alex. This one's yeah. for you. Hey! Dogs. You get exclusive access to the free... Is there any context for this, or is it just this? Um, here's the context. How could I improve this? It is a squeeze page design slash copy. In terms of the copy, mainly, but design too, if it needs it? I know it's missing the ADD email button, but apart from that, LOL. Apologies for small size. Clicking open in browser should make it larger. Cheers. I don't know what the ADD email button is. That's, um, like, a, that's like a button. But it's anyway, the, the first thing that I want to say is that, again, it's always nice to have the context of where people come from this. You've said it's a squeeze page, so I'm going to assume it's either an ad or an organic search like like it from an article um but i don't have that context so the first thing i would say one i've worked in this niche before dog training okay uh it's it's so it's like it's quite lucrative i'm not gonna say it's crazy lucrative but it's, it's more lucrative than you think and i can tell you the the in a sentence i can tell you the one reason there are two there are two reasons why it's lucrative number one and this is actually surprisingly less common is where bad dogs need training where like it's a case of um, dogs who either have been rescues or they for some reason the owner hasn't trained them very well and they're like pulling their hair out thinking oh god how do I make this how do I make my dog more like behave better that's one reason the more the far more common reason um, is the vanity of the owner to have a dog that when you point a finger gun at it it will fall over like people want like the ability for others to look at them and go, oh my God, that's amazing. Like your dog can do that. Like that's what people generally want when they're looking at dog training. Um, so the first thing I would say about this is, again, I don't know where they've come from. I don't know the ad they've seen or the article they've read, but um, unless you've like set up the free brain game as like you've already established that as your, your you know, IP is the thing that's gonna get them that thing they want. Unless you've already done that, I would recommend instead changing this page to focus more on what it is that the person wants. For example, I don't know, a headline, a headline like maybe even, oh, hang on. Hey lads, hey James, hey lads. It's a lead magnet for a brain. I've got that. I know that one. Um, sorry, meant the CTA add email sign up button. Haha, <laughs> okay, hey, it's a lead magnet for a brain training product, okay. All right, that's the case in this lead magnet. I still kind of need the context of why they're seeing this lead magnet in the first place. You know, you can't just present a lead magnet to someone. Like, they must have clicked something to see this. So it'd be nice if you could give me that, I'd appreciate it. But what I'm going to say is, like, it'd be far more effective um, to... I quite liked doing quotes for this. Like, even just something like, like, oh, my God. Um, like, OMG. Like, uh, I've never seen a dog do that. Something like that, right? Something where the the frame of the message here is that people are impressed that your dog can do something because you're saying right below you say do you want a more intelligent little buddy that screams to me that you're not going for the um oh my god i'm pulling my hair out because my dog is so badly behaved you're going for i want a dog that people look at and go that's cool um so when you talk about the brain game you're almost making it like hey here's the solution to your problem when this isn't really a this isn't really a a, a visceral problem you know, people aren't sitting there going, oh my God, I need my dog to be more impressive. People just go, hey, it'd be cool if I learned another language. Hey, it'd be cool if I could learn an instrument. Hey, it'd be cool if my dog could learn how to do these cool tricks. So you need to think on that level, which is you're effectively arguing why someone should learn the guitar. Um, why should my dog learn this trick? That's the kind of level you're arguing on. And you don't convince someone to learn the guitar by going, don't like, you know, 
don't you have such a problem the guitar a guitar in your life could fix? No, you go, hey, how cool would it be to bang out Stairway to Heaven while all your friends sit around in a circle? Same thing with the dog. Um, so that I've been talking for a while, I feel. So I'm going to set that as the, the, the initiation to this page and ask you guys to come in and, and say if you agree with that. I mean, I'll go ahead and say that I think that everything that you just gave is very valuable. One thing that I want to point out in the last three reviews that we've done, a lot of what we've been doing hasn't been line editing. It hasn't been functional editing. A lot of what we're trying to do when we speak to you directly during these streams is teach you something different. We're trying to teach you how to think. We want you to learn how to think about copy marketing positioning because the words on the page themselves, like they often are not the problem. Yeah. Your initial approach is typically the problem. And so one of the things that Alex was just pointing out was that like before like we get in, even get into like the nitpicky shit, like, you know, it's a squeeze page. Therefore, you should have an email form and a sign up button right here. You know, if we were getting very nitpicky with words, I'd mention that like compliance issues and how the FTC has been cracking down on the word exclusive. And you can't give exclusive access to something that's not fucking exclusive. They really have actually been cracking down on that. So that's something to keep in mind. No, more important is understanding like whom you're speaking to, how you're speaking to them, like the kinds of angles that you and like approaches that you want to take. These are the things that we're trying to teach you in these streams. And then every now and again, we'll get a piece of copy that's really good. And then we're like, oh my God, you know, maybe we can just do some line ads for this. But, th but this is also like, if you scroll down a little bit, Sean, um, it says at the bottom, it says cut any naughty habits. Like, um, or a, a bit further up than that, like the, the next light blue section up. Yeah, cut any naughty habits. It says that like, well, who are you talking to? Because again, I've been in. The, I've written. I've literally written video scripts for people who are selling dog behavioral courses. Are you talking to the person who is pulling their hair out because they can't trust their dog off a lead, or they're worried every time they go to the field? Um, or are you talking to the kind of person who like has just got a puppy and is like, oh my god, I really want it to know, you know, like the the rollover trick. Um, they're very very different people, uh, and. Um, this shows this just shows me you're not quite sure who you're speaking to first of all um that, that it, it's like sean says it's hard to go into line edits when the the core idea of this may be flawed so that's the first thing i would say to you is like who are you selling this to um because let me tell you an offer like this would kill you know people love people love one free shit and two like okay this might be going too specific but one thing I'd recommend for this is because people understand that they have to train the dog and it's still a bit of work, um, but people don't really want to do work. So I'd recommend talking about specifically how easy, how long, how easy it is or how long it would take to train your dog this. So if you just say like literally two pages of instruction or like there's only four commands you need to learn and you only need to do like two things with your dog again and again, do this 30 times and most like 98% of dogs learn it within those like 30 times. Yeah. Giving that specificity, yeah, yeah. like that the that four time frame. commands to give your dog, you know, exactly. like, you know, train them in seven minutes per day, like one hundred. Like yeah, that. that is exactly it. Like if you if you're if you're almost kind of um, pinning your promise to like this time frame or this, you know, um, I, I don't know this scale of difficulty, it makes it so much more believable and so much more likely. Like people go, yeah, I can commit seven minutes a day to this. Yeah, or I can I can learn four things. Um, and that's if we were going down into line edits, you know, that's the kind of the kind of things I would be saying. But first of all, yeah, establish who it is you're talking to. Rod, unless you because you've been silent for this one, I have one last comment that I want to give for this, but I want to make sure that you have. I will yield the floor to you for efficiency's okay. sake. Uh, I, 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 I yield my time. Um, strengthen your bond. Motivate your dog with treats. A fun, easy way to build a deep connection with your furry friend. Be the envy of your neighbors. Let's just forget that the be the envy of your neighbors sentence was ever written. That's very silly. But let's look at this. Like, let's think about this conceptually. Now, if you are thinking of or trying to find ways 
to strengthen your bond with your dog. And you are like going in and the sales copy or the squeeze page copy immediately says, use treats. Do you need to actually sign up for the thing that's on the squeeze page? The answer, B, no. Very good point. So one of the things, and this is this is true for bullets as well. Like one of the common mistakes that I see people making is that they just give away too much of the thing that they're trying to tease. And so one of the things that you want to be cognizant of when you're writing copy is that you are trying to evoke, provoke, entice, inspire, but ultimately the thing that needs to scratch the itch that you are creating as a copywriter, it needs to be in the product and not in the copy. And so when you say things like strengthen your bond, don't say what the answer is, what the thing is that you are going to do. Motivate your dog with dog treats. Actually, like, do some teasing. Copy should be a strip tease. I don't know why all my analogies have been so sexual today. It's weird. I think we're going to get demonetized. But but also, just before we move on, like, this, I want to bring up this comment as well. We say avoiding the product and debt copy is best here. No, not when it comes to a squeeze page. If you think about what a squeeze, a squeeze page is, it's effectively for the kind of person who is looking for a quick solution. Mm -hmm. And a person who's looking for a quick solution already knows what their problem is, and they, they want, like, an immediate, like, something to grab onto. If you're just stringing out the message again and again, it's quite difficult. But th there's that kind of adage, you know, that, that, that age-old adage in copy of... The, <laughs> the more you have to argue a point, like the more you have to convince someone, the longer your copy should be. And when you think in that frame, it doesn't take very long to convince someone to take something for free. Like there's there's no skin in the game for them. They, they have to give you an email. It's easy, we, we give our emails away all the time. So when you say, is it best to avoid the product deck, uh, product and the deck copy here? Like, no, no, this is a, if you can show them, hey, this product is gonna solve this immediate problem you have and it's free, that's an extremely, extremely enticing offer, which is why squeeze pages don't typically tend to be very long, you know, at least in, you know, in my experience. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say to that. Yeah. The, um, the longer squeeze pages, you typically see those for like webinar signups, like hot list signups. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's when you kind of need a longer squeeze page because, you know, ultimately as people get more sophisticated, they're like more onto you. And so they really need to understand that there's a clear benefit for them to signing up to like your training or your course or your webinar or whatever. So. Shall we move on? Let's do it. All right. Okay. We got some product copy for the Copy That Show uh, product pages. Ooh. Um, just to fill everybody in on like what this is, we have on copythatshow.com. Oh, my God. Wait. Hold on. We have one of these banner things. Ah, I'm so bad at this. Um, on there, we have we sell our master classes individually for people that don't want to sign up to the Patreon. And so we don't really have a lot of copy for that. So what we've said is like, hey, we will pay you 150 bucks if we publish your copy. And so th three of these have been published so far, but there's like 20 remaining pages that need copy. And so we've been basically reviewing people's copy on these streams um, as we get them. Uh, and we've been very bad about that. Uh, but basically anybody that we accept, we're going to pay you to write copy for us. And all you need to do is just have access to the course so that you know what the hell you're talking about. But beyond that, that's the only requirement. So because I've reviewed so very many of these before, if I am not grabbed by the short and curlies in the like within the big pocket in the beginning, mm. the headline, and then the first five paragraphs, short paragraphs of the copy itself, I'm just going to immediately abort and say like, nope, go watch the previous streams and rethink this. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? I I agree. I think that we've done enough of the, I th we must have done like six of this one. Surely. You know? yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I respect a woman's right to choose. So that's, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> By the way, Rod, did you hear the uh, statistics that came out today about that? No. So in every state, except for one that banned abortion in America, all of their birth rates are massively up. Like statistically, really? trend-wise, like they're really, really high up. 
The only one that didn't go up is Missouri, and that's because it is surrounded by states that didn't ban abortion. Oh. Now, here's here's another interesting fact, and this came out today. Um, of the states that banned abortion, uh, abortions have gone up significantly. Like So even though a large number of states banned abortion, mm. abortions in the United States actually increased by 0.2%. So the abortions that took place in the places where it's still legal massively outweighed the number of states that totally banned it altogether. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, and I, and I bet too, you could go to, you could like look at the borders and be like, and, and see those spikes in specific states. Because I imagine that if you're Washington, for example, you probably didn't see it particularly huge yeah. rise. The, uh, the commentator that I was speaking to that was talking about that mentioned that like the increase in abortions also probably has to do with the, like the fact that like, well, now that they're illegal, a lot of people are nervous to be living in a country and raising a child in a country that is no longer respecting these rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny. I mean, it's, we're going off topic now, but I'll say it anyway. I I speak to a number of women of child rearing age and I'm now at the age where like people have been in their professional careers for a good amount of time, like make decent money, yada, yada, yada. And the number of women I meet who are just completely not interested in having kids because of things going on in the country, the economic environment or whatever is like, is honestly mind boggling. And it's not a bad thing to me per se. But thinking about how much that has shifted even across my lifetime is <laughs> fascinating. And I feel like we're going to have a reckoning as a society at some point in the next couple decades in terms of like how the way in which we've made raising a child and what people feel like is a good environment, prohibitively expensive or inaccessible is going to have some consequences for us down the line. You think? I... <laughs> I genuinely blame TikTok for people's lack of interest in having children. And I'll tell you for why. Because yeah, there's, there's there's more to life now than having kids. Like yeah. if you you can sit on the sofa and you can scroll through a hundred videos that keep you marginally entertained for that long, like your time is is occupied with something that is entertaining. Whereas before, fifty years ago, it wasn't. It was like, oh, wait, well, may as well watch a kid run around. It's funny. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I love this conversation. So yes, the literal that, and also there's the added layer of, okay, well now you live in a world in which you see how much is potentially possible for you to achieve in so many different directions and they all seem so appealing. And so yeah. the idea of doing one of the ultimate forms of self-sacrifice having a kid and if you want to be a good parent sacrificing your ability to do so many of these things for something that seems like it's going to be really hard really painful it's going to have a lot of physical consequences a lot of economic consequences is so unappealing that to even move in the direction of of doing that i i, I understand why it's hard for people to want to make that choice yeah. I mean, someone's just said, you know, social media in general, not, I'm just using TikTok as a scapegoat. I don't mean yeah. just TikTok. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe. And also we're, we're making it easier for people to become copywriters instead of have children. So maybe we should change that. We are part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> have kids, guys. <laughs> save, yeah. save the human race. <laughs> I, I, I read the statistic recently that like adolescent sex in the U S is down to like levels never before seen. And therefore teenage pregnancy is also down to a level never before seen. Now the latter one, probably pretty good, but it's not because people have wised up about birth control. It's because the the kids ain't fucking. And so like a lot of people are getting into their twenties and they're just not being socialized in regards to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not having to contend with the, I mean, let's be real. The sheer, like, sticky awkwardness Messiness. of teenage adolescent love. So, yeah. yeah, it was hyped up so much when I was a kid, and then you do, and it's, and then you hit fourteen, 
Is this felony? Can I, if I admit to being 14 and having done it, is that illegal or is that? Because uh, I, I mean, it's a felony for the person on the other end if they're like, if, they were like 30. Yeah, no, that wasn't the case. Like, we were both 14, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, anyway, um, that it's not as good. And then I think because you, you're so bombarded with, if, if you're in the 1900s, it's like, you don't even hear about this because you haven't got social media. So no one talks about, you know, sex and then you do it and it's like wow that's amazing now you've got like you know you've got load you've got you've got pornography in in rod's case hentai and you know it's <laughs> do not put that evil on <laughs> <the Alex. laughs> in, in back. <laughs> oh food oh let's talk about food and Ari. um <laughs> are we doing copy that i forgot we were streaming for a hot, for a hot <laughs> <second there. laughs> you can't say that on camera Oh, anyway, I, the, my whole thesis is that I think that all the um, 13 to 17 year old children who like are on their grind set and trying to learn copywriting and hitting the gym. No, you're living life wrong. What, what you should be doing is skipping school, doing drugs and having sex like every single one of them. And like if you ain't living that way, you ain't living life right. Like you have yeah. your, your whole 20s to figure your shit out. But your teens, that's the time. <laughs> yeah, did <laughs> It's it's Definitely. so it's so funny because you say that in jest ish, but the ultimate truth that I have learned over the last ten years of my life is that the one thing that you can bring to the table professionally that outweighs every skill set, every um, you know every kind of form of pedigree, whatever, is experience. And I know so many people in my life, myself included, where you know, you kind of did whatever, but then you get to a point where you have so much experience, you've interacted with so many different kinds of people, you know how to speak so many different kinds of like cadences that you end up being able to operate in these professional spaces with a much higher degree of fluency and competence than people who've been doing it their entire lives out of college, because that's the only thing they know. And so they only know how to think one very specific way. And so if you can do their job like at 80 percent of the level but also be able to integrate with like all these other teams or different kinds of people or bring different kinds of ideas to the table you end up being infinitely more valuable and so i'm not saying skip high school to go do math but i might be saying have some hobbies that are not being on that grind set yeah i i think that's uh, i'm being jokey haha but what rod just said i think is the real reason why I, I'm so seethingly disdainful of <laughs> the the teenagers who are just like, nope, I'm a grind set. Nope, I don't want the conventional path. Nope, don't want to be a brokey. Don't want to be a normie. Don't want to do the 95 Matrix thing. Like, I just I just find that so, I don't know, boring and myopic and silly. And like, you're you're 15. Like, go go think about women and go read some sci-fi novels. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, hell, work at Baskin Robbins for a summer, and you will learn more about business than you will than you will running your own business as a fifteen year old, or reading like any books years. about it. Yeah, just it's just go out, just just go to the park, you know, go and hang out with friends, start a few fires, smash some windows, get told off, like just go and live. Well, yeah, live. There you go. That's yeah. that's better than saying go and commit vandalism. But yeah, go and live, go and do stuff. It's fun. Yeah. I remember it a lot more than I'm yeah. I'm glad I'm glad I was a kid when I was a kid. Yeah. Big same. Touch grass, yeah. kiddos. That that mark, that's just fucking sad, dude. Um <laughs> I'm joking. We're we're all we're all fans of video games and, and Japanese. No, I, I actually like I will try to play like one video game per year just to yeah. keep my hand in it. Um I also like I I don't watch anime very often, but I did just watch a show called Scavenger's Reign. Have you guys heard about this? I don't know that. No. It is. So it's in a very, it's in a style very similar to like your Hayao Miyazaki kind of art. But it's it's done in America. And I I don't even know how to describe it. It's It's so, it's one of the best stories that I've seen put out there into the world in a very long time. It's it's clearly a miniseries. It's also extremely complex. Like when you start talking about it with somebody else who's seen it, 
like you, there's just layers upon layers upon layers of what's going on. And a large part of like all the episodes of this show are just like the way man contends with and interacts with nature. And like the notion of good and evil being a man-made construct that can infect a natural space rather than a natural space being itself good or evil. Like there's a lot going on in that show. And like, as far, like, it just happens to be a really good show that also happens to be an anime. But like, if you guys have not seen Scavenger's Reign, it gets the Sean seal of approval. I don't watch a whole lot of media anymore, but like that was superlative. I like High School DxD. Um, Jesus Christ, Rod! The fact you know what that is is worrying. Um, I don't know what that is. What <laughs> good. That? Keep it like that. But that, honestly, what you just said there, Sean, that's what I, I always say that. Like, it doesn't matter if it's an anime or a cartoon or whatever. Um, or if, like, comedy music has the same thing. It has to be a good story, first and foremost, for it to be a good any of those things, right? Like, a good comedy song has to be a good song to begin with. Like, it has to be catchy. A good anime has to be a good story. Otherwise, it's like, well, I wouldn't watch the... If I wouldn't watch it if it was done by real people, I'm not going to watch it if it was an anime and vice versa, you know. My friend Khalil once put it this way, and he said this about the movie Akira, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. And he said it <laughs> this way, which is Akira is an anime in medium, but not in genre. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For sure. So. Anyway, I guess we should probably review some copy. So, anyway, back to the cash conveyor belt. By the way, yeah, I like, everybody I like <laughs> who is watching that, like, when we all hang out, like, off stream, this is the kind of stuff that we talk about. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was an unfiltered, like, how we interact with each other moment. So. Yeah, I have Berserk down there somewhere, but it's too far back right now, and I'm my coordination is far, too far gone. Go on. <laughs> Next copy. Cash conveyor belt and advanced master class on email sequences. Email sequences can automate the sales process of any business. And if you can learn to create profitable email sequences, you can maximize revenue for any business you work with. This master class will teach you how to use the different types of profitable email sequences to maximize results for your clients. Not bad so far. Businesses in e-commerce, B2B services, SaaS companies, and many more rely heavily on effective email marketing to sell their product. Creating email sequences, okay. Articulating demand, loving it. Mm -hmm. Creating email sequences is an advanced skill set that high paying clients are actively looking for. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I could see how this could be punched up, but so far so good. If you can maximize revenue for a business with your email sequences, it can lead to long-term work, a solid portfolio and bigger clients. Okay, benefit for the person learning this. <laughs> I give this a solid, Christ, a B. This yeah, I was going to say, it's like, a, it's like a B, to be honest. It's a B, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, the last... Yeah, sorry, 84. The, the last bullet, I might, like, move away from the maximizing revenue part a yeah. little bit, but... I would, I would do automate. Yeah, um... But the, the logic there makes complete sense to me. Yeah. And it's good logic. It's useful logic. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Like, yeah, these these two bullets, you can punch up. This is dry, but it's effective yeah. for what we're talking about. <laughs> I think that's the that's that's my biggest, that would be my biggest thing, is if, I'm, if I start by reading that description, I may be a, bit, a, a little bit like, eh, okay. Like, email sequences can also make the sales price of any business. Cool. T tell me what that means. Like, what? Why would a business want to automate the sales process? If you instead said, um, like, yeah. every business like wants and and then in fucking uh, parentheses or uh, speech marks, like every business wants an automated sequence because it's like a money tap, right? Or like it's opening up the 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 revenue tap, and it's super easy to learn how to do it. That then makes me go like, oh, okay, cool. Then you can yeah. talk about it. it's going to allow you to maximize, but da, 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 and you can go into that normal thing. But just just show me show me why they where they actually want that. you know automating the sales process is a little little bit dry yeah. makes me feel a bit like what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. I I, 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 I will can. say though that like given the choice between 
copy that is dry, but makes sense logically or present is presenting an actual argument versus something that's interesting, but it's hard to follow. This wins a hundred percent of the time for me. And it's much easier to make copy that is simple, but boring, interesting than it is to make interesting, but confusing copy simple to understand. Yeah. I, I also just like, yeah. HMS Cheshire we're is like my favorite. Yeah, this and was like okay, I know, I know, I know, I know. Some, Someone said Azulane. I don't know many people who know Azulane. It's done. Gotcha games. Done. Do you know all this, Rod? You know all this. That's the thing. By taking the piss, you are revealing the fact that you know what these things are, and it's it's very embarrassing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. How many people watched Lane? <laughs> it's oh, not did. Lane. I it's Azulane. <laughs> Uh, uh, name one other copy guru that would <laughs> admit to being to knowing all these different anime. Uh, that's what you get with copy. That's that's the USP for copy. That you get to listen to just nerds. Nerds. I, I, I actually referenced Lane in an internal Slack channel where we were talking about like the attention economy or something, and like the development of like youth engagement on the internet and like social media and stuff. And I like made some sarcastic comment in which I like si simultaneously tim simultaneously reference Lane and the book by I forget whose name Siberia that inspired the anime series or whatever. And someone was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And then they're like, "Wow, that's really interesting." But like that's the kind I I am an anime nerd a little bit, a little bit. I so I mean that kind of ties into our whole like you know get experience and touch grass kids. Mm -hmm. conversation that we just had earlier like um i think one of the most valuable things that i've ever done in my life is just absorb as much cultural capital as possible what is mm -hmm. cultural capital it is just like knowing and like having a lot of cultural touch points that you can use to communicate your ideas to people that would be on that level um mm -hmm. and that i would actually attribute a lot of my success to um just being able to talk to anybody about anything because I have such a wide array yeah. of knowledge about a lot of different shit. It's extremely the valuable. The most useful piece of advice I think you've ever given me, Sean. And you've given me a lot of bits of useful advice. Well, I, I appreciate that. I Listen, even if we publish this, like I wouldn't hate it. Like I'd want to punch it up. But so far, so good. You know what this seems like to me? It seems like the kind of thing that we would write kind of quickly off the cuff. Like super and then quick. Go back and, improve. and then, yeah, like... Maybe, maybe like not quite like there, but it, it's like that kind of that kind of area. So it's not it's not hmm. terrible. How to unlock the hidden profits in your email sequences and maximize revenue for your clients? I would just get I, rid of how to, and then change maximize yeah. to automate. Unlock the hidden profits in your email sequences and automate revenue for your clients. Yeah, I would also I would also maybe it's very very nitpicky, but I'd also probably change like in your to from because again like someone might look at this and be like oh should i already know how to do email sequences then like is this like should i be running them whereas if you take it uh unlock hidden profits from email sequences it's more like oh right so i'm learning from the ground up how do i do this or using email sequences or yeah yeah, yeah exactly huh I, I gotta be honest like i started that whole side pot conversation earlier because i was like dreading looking at this and like <laughs> so far so good like I'm, I'm actually like I don't, I don't want to feel hope. I've been burned too many times before. <laughs> <laughs> like, am, am I going to, am, am I about to pay somebody 150 dollars for their copy live on stream right now? I think I might. I'm, I'm already liking. You know, I've just spread ahead to the next couple of sentences, and I actually quite like them. So let's keep going. I'm looking because this is from Hayato, and like, if I remember correctly, this dude has like rewritten this like six times at this point. That's good so, though. That's, I mean, that's a testament to like, yeah. This dude was determined, and like, I'm seeing the results so far. Mm -hmm. This advanced masterclass is specifically made for seasoned copywriters, not those just starting out in the world of copywriting. Love it. This qualification early. If you are looking to learn how to write good emails, this is not for you. With it so far. However, if you have written emails, studied them, and now want to take your skills to the next level, you are in the right place. I'm on board. 
It, this two hour long masterclass, you will learn the different types of profitable email sequences and how you can maximize revenues from them. Again, would change maximize to re automate. Sean McIntyre has been using, I would give a little bit of introduction for that, but people seeing this are going to be pretty familiar. So that's a nitpick. Sean McIntyre has been using these email sequences to generate more than a million dollars for his clients. He understands the process inside out. So take notes as he breaks down his million dollar webinar, webinar email sequence of victory. And then we got a, a comma line break. I, that's a pet peeve of mine. Um, and shares his that. little known secrets that improve conversion rates, deliverability, engagement, sales, and revenue in email sequences. All right. <laughs> Guys, we're, we're like, I didn't expect to get this far. I'm sorry, read that next line. Plus, he uncovers the most profitable email sequence that you can start using immediately. 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 Dude. My heart. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. No, I like that. Here are some of the things you'll learn in this mask class. Ooh. Not all. 17 minutes and 18 seconds. Why most copywriters are using email sequences the wrong way. You need to learn this ability to adapt your email sequences to any business you work with. Mastering this will ensure that you can consistently deliver profitable email sequences to all your clients. That's a solid bullet. I That's like that bullet. bullet. All right. At 2335. You think that's an email sequence? No. <laughs> this is an email sequence. Sean reveals the 15 step nurture sequence that brings more conversions. Instead of writing a standard welcome email sequence, use this nurture sequence instead for better conversions. Even um, with the repetition of better conversions and more conversions, <clears throat> this bullet still works. This is what I say. So, whenever we review bullets, I say this so often. Like, if the core. I, like, you can always strip away a bullet and find the core idea of it. Like, it, it's always, you know, positioning something against something else, or it's it's showing a benefit. And this, the core of this bullet is, like, most people are doing this wrong. We're going to show you the specific thing you can do, like, to, to, to make it better. That That's a good idea. Like, doesn't even if you fuck up around that, like, that's a good idea. You yeah. know? Nice. 2902. Are you using the standard welcome email sequence for coaches, solopreneurs, or fitness instructors? For personality-driven emails, learn this sequence to generate more sales for your client. God fucking damn, dude. Yeah. I tweak Guys, away I'm from, like, about ready to throw effect. 150 bucks at this motherfucker. You know what this is? Like, I, I would say there are elements of this that still need a bit of punching up. Yeah. But this, yeah. is, this just crushes the threshold into, I'd be happy to pay for this, especially considering how much effort has been put into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because like all the stuff I'm thinking of is like, oh, it's yeah. You know, if it changes where it changes, these are line edits. Yeah, it, like who cares <laughs> about line edit? Like it's working. Yeah. Huh? How about that? What well a good done. day. Who did you say? Who did you say this day? was? Huh? Who did you say this was? This is Hayato. Hayato, well done. Are you watching? I don't know if he is. I think so. I wish he Guys. was. Oh. Oh man, like I, I need to get this ready. Money like, hold on. <laughs> like, do you just have money by the desk ready for this? You fucking know I do, dude. I have pounds. If if you like pounds. All right, we got 50, 100, 150. All right. 40, 60, 80, let's move 60. on because like, I'm ready. I'll, I'm almost ready. Okay, let's let's skip ahead because we can always refine a bullet. Like once, like they're actually like pretty strong. Okay. This slide could be a masterclass by itself. 11 must know tips to bring better <laughs> results with your sequences, including the subtle technique you can use to start getting sales before you even sell the product. Did, did he just, uh, did he just bullet within a bullet? Is that a lie? <laughs> and I'm, I'm one, I'm loving it Two, He like teased the self liquidating offer. Ah, I'm loving it. Why you need to use this on day three of the welcome sequence to build credibility. Oh my God. How to collect voice of customers and testimonials on autopilot. The best thing to do when you're in doubt about what to write, save hours with this method, how to take advantage of your customers buying mood when their wallets are out, your pockets should be out. I don't even know what that means, but I like it. <laughs> uh, I, I just love the goal to put seven bullets Within a, bullet, <laughs> within a bullet, right? Like that—that's I've never, I genuinely have not seen that. So, 
Yeah, yeah. Actually, I've never seen it either. It's it's yeah. ballsy. Huh. Oh. We we have the, their personal notes. Would be nice to finish off with with maybe a little bit of a close, a little bit of a hey. This yeah. way you should go back up and use this. But again, like yeah, this needs like just a, like a paragraph of close, like a like a CTA to bring them back to hey, buy the fucking thing. Two, three. Hi Otto, we're buying your copy. We've just got it. the queen's face all over you, and she's dead. Um, <laughs> here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make uh, a copy of this. Oh, he's here. He's oh, here. Shit. That's you're not Karen Nell today, my friend. Oh snap! Hayato, um, DM one of us. Well, preferably me, but like any of us, your uh, payment information, preferably PayPal, and we'll ship you 150 bucks for this. Um. Like, cool. Everybody watching, yep. you just watched a person write copy for us and get get paid for it. And this <laughs> person put in a massive amount of effort. Huh. Well done, Ada. Well I done. Appreciate well, and you know what? You showed the grind. You showed the persistence. You showed the ability to take on feedback, go back, re-edit. Like that in itself is worth a reward. Plus, you're some good copy. So, well done. Yeah, I wouldn't reward the effort of it still produced crap. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm nicer than Sean is. All right. Yeah. $150. There you go. But go I'm and kinder. buy yourself. <laughs> yes. Go and buy yourself and your mother, partner, aunt a lovely steak dinner. Yeah. Or vegan alternative. <laughs> So straight up, Hayato, like, send us your your PayPal information. We'll get you the money pretty much after the stream is over. Um, I will ask you just for a quick favor to just like you know do one quick like go through and punch up some of the stuff that we pointed out. But other than that, like, dude, you wrote some publishable copy, and we are delighted to publish it and to pay you for it. So thank you so much. I love how we procrastinated on getting to it. <laughs> It's true. It really is true. So, like, here, let me mark this. Check mark. And then 1,000. And this person gets a dollar sign. All right. Ooh. Wow. I, I feel so good. I feel so good to have read, like, good product description copy. Ah. Oh. I don't... It's like one of those things where it's like, should we even continue the stream? <laughs> do, do we keep going? Yeah. Like, I feel like that was the climax. We have to keep going. It's true. We have yeah, to. It's true. We're All right. Contractually obligated. Hayato, do those things that I told you. Everybody, congratulate Hayato for getting 150 bucks for for some copy that he worked really hard on. So, good job. Well done. Um, let's see. And then this, this is going to be a sales email. Um, cool. I believe this is from a Mr. John Cornelius. Here, I'm also going to go through um, what I've covered and check it so that we know for the future like what we actually covered on stream. <clears throat> okay, and then... Also, just quick, Justin asked, are there any more masterclasses to create product descriptions for? There are many, many masterclasses. I don't even think we paid for that many. Yeah, that, that was going to be number four. Yeah, Here, three or let four, me, yeah. Let me show you guys this. So if you go to copythatshow.com, if you go to digital products... Um, these are all the masterclasses we have. If you click on any random one, like give them a show, the masterclass on resumes, you'll see this is, we just have placeholder copy for most of these. And the, the, the reason for that is twofold. One, we're busy. And two, we wanted to give a, people a chance to like get feedback, get paid to write copy, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so if you look through most of these, you'll find that most of them have not had copy written for them. Yeah, like I've published two recently as well, like at the top, and they, they definitely don't have copy. Yeah, like th this is the copy that we have for this. It's just lacking. Like that, that was just me. That was just like that. I literally, that was 30 seconds. And I was like, done. Because it had been a busy day. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's the opportunity here. So, you know, everybody can take advantage of this. And you, you person watching, you just saw it happen. You saw 
like what this person did to get to this point. If you look at past streams, like we've looked at his copy before and like we've basically said, I think at one point, Alex, I think you said like, you just need to completely rethink your approach here. And he did. And the copy came out great. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Man, that is, I'm, I'm delighted. Absolutely delighted. So let's look at this sales email while I'm in a good mood. Sales email five. Okay. So the reader. Uh, this is, uh, for those of you who do not know, this is Alex's Rioa system, uh, which he mentions and talks about in his um, five-hour course. Um, when I write copy on stream, I've started using Rioa as well, just to give people a sense of like, you know, this is what I'm you know, doing here. This is what this is for, yada, yada. So one reader, university or college students and recent graduates in the UK. Their problem is that the CV and cover letter uh, writing advice is often generic and conflicting. Okay. One idea, throw out the popular job application advice and use the secrets in the masterclass <laughs> to write better CVs and cover letters. Interesting. I wonder what this is for. The context is decided to create a small offer to help me find motivation to take copywriting seriously. So here's a couple of emails I've written. All right. Uh, one offer, a 30, 30 pound, sorry, I, I was trying to use real money, but it's pounds. Ooh. A 30 pound masterclass on how to do thorough research and use networking to write unique and impressive CVs and cover letters. Okay. And then this is the landing page. Masterclass oh, that gets cool. to writing unique and persuasive CVs and cover letters. Um, I can tell you formatting wise, you like immediately need to make this a little bit easier to read. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. Masterclass, the secrets of writing unique process. Okay. All right. Fair enough. On action, click on the link. Okay. So um, Alex, do you want to... I'm noticing a slight discrepancy here, here before we even read the copy. Um, right here. Uh, do, you, do you see what I see? Or... Do you think that there's a discrepancy there at all? Use networking to write unique oh, and impressive. Yeah. I mean, the first thing would be that, like, networking and CVs are very different. And how doing thorough research to doing a CV is like, there's not necessarily a link between those two. Uh, I'm not sure I would consider that an offer. Those are the two things that I'm seeing immediately from that. My thing is, like, if it's a sales email, like, yeah. You know, a is sales it, email. Really a sales email, though? Yeah. Like, like, a Lyft is trying to get people to click. A sales email does a little bit more. It does selling. You know, it's actually. Ah, right. I guess I'm, I'm slightly more forgiving on that. And, the, like, I don't know if they've just used sales email here as a, like, all. oh, it's an email that's to do with sales at some point. Um, but I would still say like, you know, use networking to write a unique and impressive CVs. Like that's like networking to write a CV is a bit confusing because it's, it's usually you do one or the other of those things, I guess you either network to find a job or you write CV to someone who doesn't know you yet. Um, uh, and then immediately saying, well, let's read the email cause that'll help give context. I just want to point out though, this is real money. Your money, if you were to, if you were to rip your money, it would rip. I can do this and it doesn't it doesn't rip. Rip that. Rip that in half. I don't don't want to because American money will rip in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Case closed. Okay, anyway. Um and also I have a masterclass about this. So the person who wrote this, just go and write the description for my masterclass and you may be paid 150 pounds. <laughs> Dollars. Not 150 pounds, because that's like thousand yeah, dollars. That would be like $160 in real money. That's it's more than that. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's read this. Um, oh, I'll, I'll read this one. So, subject line: Time to disregard popular job application advice? Question mark. Now, I was going to say before we even read the email, should we just talk about the subject line? Um, the first question I always like to ask with the emails is how did they get how did they get on the list? Like that's the first one, but I'm just going to assume that this person, we know this person is interested in, in finding a better job or finding a job. Um, time to disregard pop the job application advice. I think you could say that in about three or four words. 
like time to disregard popular those are four words yes those are four words that aren't really doing anything like the thing this is effectively saying is ignore ignore cv advice there you go i've said the same thing you just said in your subject line in three words ignore resume advice or ignore cv advice exclamation point do this instead like that that does so much more um and is so much more impactful than time to disregard, disregard popular job application advice question mark question mark not as evocative it's not as it's not getting the same message across in as short space as something like you know ignore cv advice would um I would that's do, my first thing throw your boring cv out the window or something like that throw your boring yeah. cv away parentheses do this instead job hunting advice sucks yeah so it's like oh you know still unemployed question mark um <laughs> this is why you know yeah. <laughs> i can't find a job this is why that's that's far more evocative um so that's the first thing i would ask argue about the subject line anyway moving on dear reader capitalized reader dear reader Sometimes the only way to get what you want is by disregarding popular job application advice. And I firmly believe that such time is right now. That's why I want to share with you my favorite CV and cover letter secrets and how they landed me jobs at Barclays and the Bank of New York. It will only take a few minutes of your time, but these are incredible secrets and I can just about guarantee it will change the way you look at popular job application advice. I believe it could also help you start landing interviews with the companies you're applying to. You'll see exactly what I mean. Access secrets on the website right here. Every success, John. Now, let me tell you, I do not hate this. I don't hate it like, either. There are some like small things, but yeah. like the general idea is pretty good. Yeah. Like, I want to show you secret tips, how they got me these things, showing the proof. And it's only take a few minutes, and this could be the thing that changes your fortunes. That those like three points are like, wow, fuck yeah, of course I'm going to click and have a look at least. Um, the first line I would completely scrap like the first two lines because you're already saying that in your subject line. Um, you could basically see, you can basically just start this with, I want to show you how my CV slash cover letter secrets got me jobs at Barclays and the Bank of New York. I may add uh, an addendum onto that saying something like without x right you know like without having all the qualifications or without spending a load of time doing it um the rest of the email outside of that those changes i would say is i probably wouldn't change too much to be honest like it's fine so it what is it referring to here sharing reading this, the secrets yeah. mm -hmm. i guess it would be yeah, looking reading this Learning these, discovering these will only take a few minutes. Yeah. So, you know, careful about your your reference, your, you know, antecedents, mm -hmm. things like that. And I can just about guarantee it will change the way you look at popular job application advice. I feel like, so Alex, yes, I agree. I want to share with you my favorite CV and cover letter secrets and how they land me a job at Barclays and Bank of New York. That's a good opening. It's disruptive. It's very specific. It's very unique. Love it. What I disagree. Do... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to make a case for why they should keep the first two lines. I, I was about to say the same thing. Are you, you like, go off? Then. I, Rod, you first. No, you first. I interrupted you. You're, you're, you're gone. All good. I, I was going to say, like, I see what this is trying to do is mm -hmm. trying to disrupt and like, like throw, like basically get attention and like get somebody to sit on the edge of their seat and pay attention to this. And like, how many of you like sit on the edge of your seat and pay attention when somebody says anything about like CV and cover letter secrets? Not a whole lot. And so like somebody who's very warm, who's very interested, who's on this list because they want these things. Yeah. They're going to pay attention. But if you're speaking to a list of people that, that are not like hot and horny, why am I so dirty today? Like <laughs> people that are just really excited about CV and cover letter secrets, um, then you need to like have some other stinger, something else that like gets attention and disrupts people uh, as they go about their daily lives. One thing that immediately comes to mind is like, you can just rewrite this as like, dear reader, everything you know about job applications is a scam. 
you know, just say something provocative and attention getting like that. And then let's sort of like unfold it a little bit before you like segue. You know, if you're going to make a big provocative statement like that, there has to be a payoff a little bit later. So keep that in mind. You know, don't just be like, I'm going to say something stupid and ridiculous and then transition. That's that was my strategy in high school. It worked, but like not in a good way. So like, yeah. don't do that. But yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. no, I'm, I'm done. Rod, you take it from here. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say is that I, I actually agree that starting with like the I want to share secrets is, is strong and that's a really valuable thing to say in there. However, I think what that intro bit gives you the opportunity to do, to do is set a tonality to the email. It gives you the opportunity to speak with a certain kind of authority or set like or kind of establish like how someone should be receiving the rest of it um, because you are then going to going on to say. I want to share these secrets or whatever with you. The person reading this needs to understand that these secrets are coming from a voice of authority and you have an opportunity to use that little introductory bit, even if it's just a line or two to set that tone so that when you say that people hear it in the way you need them to hear it. I, um, I, I, I definitely stand by, I, I think cut those two lines because I think they're wasted space. I think opening with, a, a a pure reference to how you have already done the thing that they want to do and it's because of these secrets you have it establishes the authority immediately and it's a disrupt it's like okay well i'm gonna listen to you because you've already had this thing i think the only thing that i may that may justify having a line before that may be basically justifying their failure in the sense of saying um almost like a headline like you don't have a job yet not it's like it's the reason you ha don't have a job is nothing to do with you it's because of these mistakes you're making in your resume you know probably cut that down for some you know some brevity there but that kind of like lead into saying you know it's not you almost like we were talking about like earlier it's almost the unique mechanism of the problem and the unique mechanism of the solution again saying you don't have a job and that's the problem but the reason that that problem exists is not because of you it's because of your cv and the thing you're communicating in that initial like first impression like but that this first impression can be cured by these secrets that i've learned and this is going to help you get a job it goes from problem to the reason of the problem to the specific thing about the solution to the desire that you have like you know see how that repeats in so much we did it for a sales letter here it is for an email or a lift you know effectively yeah uh, this is yeah. basically a lift yeah side pot we should do like a year end like group q and a stream where we're yes. all drinking oh yes yes yeah let's do, oh how how busy are you guys on new year's eve uh, <laughs> i've got nothing planned um that might be too much asking everyone to step away from their families but well, well, yes. the real problem is that it's gonna be very different time zones because new year's eve for you like midnight for you will be 4 p.m for me yeah <laughs> I, I can stay up till 4 a.m yeah. i'll be hammered but, no, you know. you'd have to stay up, stay up till 8 a.m. for me. Christ. Um, <laughs> just I'm, I'll be dead. Sleep and then wake up in the morning and then start drinking. That yeah. is also an option. No, because then I, I have I have to do stuff on the 2nd of January. I don't know. Maybe maybe in that, you know, like that weird gooch area between Christmas and New Year's where no one knows what's going on. Let's do a stream then. We, we, we should definitely do something. And also, I, I have no idea where I'm going to be. I might be on the East Coast, in which case it's a little bit simpler. Rod, if you're not hanging out with family, you're you are more than welcome to hang out here again. So, yeah, absolutely, that'd be fun. Yeah, well, I yeah, maybe I'll throw a, a New Year's Eve party or something like that. That sounds like it could be fun. How how cheap are flights in December? You should find out. Yeah, come on down. London to Baltimore flights. You guys continue. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have a look at British Airways. So really quick, uh, Runaway Train mentions Herschel Gordon Lewis. I brought out this book earlier. Guess who's the author? He's Whoa. pretty good. Fun fact: Herschel Gordon Lewis is also a B movie horror director. Really? Yeah, he's a co he was a copywriter, a scriptwriter, and a B movie like gore horror movie director in the 80s and 90s. He wrote the B movie. What's up? He wrote the B movie. He wrote many B movies. Oh, B, not the B movie. Oh, that's a shame. Um. Anyway, so 
we'll talk we'll we'll talk behind the scenes about like all getting together at my house for a party um in the meantime this is not bad john if you're watching this is actually some of the better like this is better copy than i've seen from you like you're clearly improving i see it on the page i think there are a few things that i might consider like tweaking a little bit uh you know like being clear with your antecedents, things like that. Um, you're getting very good at finessing your language. Uh, that's pretty cool. I believe it could also help you start landing interviews with the companies you're applying to. You'll see exactly what I mean. Like that, that's weak right, right there. But this leading up to is pretty strong considering the context. Um, so yeah. Ev, like this is it's a good start like this takes very little extra editing to polish it into like a solid b plus lift so yeah do you guys have anything else that you want to say about this no no i've said my piece i think it's good we have another sales email from john uh i think for the same product <laughs> I love the subject line. Should you let AI write your CV and cover letter? No. And I'll tell you why, because AI reads the majority of the stuff that's out there in the world, and the majority of the stuff that's out there in the world when it comes to CVs is bad, which is why the majority of people don't get the jobs they go for. Yeah. Dear reader, a few years ago, you might have raised your eyebrow at the idea of AI writing your CV and cover letter. But things have changed. Since the AI craze began, people have been turning to systems to optimize all parts of their lives, how to exercise, socialize, even travel. It's interesting tech, but as someone who has worked for a university for over three years, I believe you should never let these AI platforms like ChatGPT write your CV and cover letter. The use of the technology is being increasingly detected. Plus, most job applicants don't know how to use it well. Uh, really quick, I can already tell you guys the problem that I have with this, mm -hmm. which is it's polemical without being intriguing. It's like talking at somebody rather than like giving a compelling reason why. What was that word? Polemical. 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 I've never yeah. heard that. What does that mean? Uh, like basically like articulating a polemic or like creating an argument that has multiple sides. So, nice. Easy. but yeah, basically, like I, I think the big problem with this is like it's trying, it's trying to be argumentative. It's trying to say like, no, you shouldn't do it. But also, like you know, the purpose here is not to like state an argument. It's to be evocative. Like, so the way that you would want to phrase that is like, you know, people, you know, people don't know that the problem that you know ChatGPT and AI causes is this and this and this and this. Like, people don't realize that these problems arise from the use of these AI devices, things like that. So that that would be like where I would go with this. You guys might have a different opinion, but. Could you show what happens like right after this bit? Yeah. Or where they go. I could never advise you to put your career prospects in the hands of something that is being targeted by companies, including universities right now. If you do that, I believe you're going to be badly hurt. But unlike ChatGPT or other AI programs being rapidly launched by CV and cover letter secrets, actually make things stupidly simple for you. And they're based on real intelligence, the real factors that dictate whether recruiters invite you to an interview or not. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, I agree with your assessment, John, or Sean, excuse me. Uh, I could almost forgive like the length of the beginning part if it cut to like a very succinct but that pivots into the actual intrigue bit like oh should you let it no maybe yada, yada, yada. but there is this other thing and then you hint at the things that's saying here but i think it just takes too long to get there um but the arguments and the, the copy they've written to kind of talk up these secrets i think is actually pretty good just skimming what follows this yeah i imagine if this email were like dear reader have you thought or even started using AI to write your resumes or cover letters? Well, 
you're probably not the only one. In fact, it's all the rage right now. But I've been on the inside. I've been working for institutions that review these resumes. And guess what? And then line break. Uh, we are cracking down on, you know, or re banks, jobs, universities are all cracking down on AI generated resumes. And guess what? Here's the reason why I know this is happening. It's because these institutions are actually using AI to read your resumes. And then like go on from there. And then you can use that that little factoid to pivot to like how do you overcome this problem? How do you write in such a way that these, you know, AI algorithms are actually going to want to hire you? How to make these AI algorithms drooling at the prospect of hiring you? Well, I got to tell you, I've reviewed, uh, I've, I've actually come up with a few secrets over the course of my long career working for Barclays, and this is da, 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 with the credibility. Um, that's how you would pivot from there. That would be how I would rewrite this. <clears throat> I would read that email. Alex, what do you think? I think that leaning on AI is not a bad thing. I think that Kind of as you've just explained, it, it it needs a, I'm not sure what the word is, a re-skin, a restructure, J just just a, it's not a bad, I don't think the idea that you have is bad, I think the way in which you're applying it is, is slightly off, like mm -hmm. slightly off kilter. So I agree, I do, I agree with your approach to that, Correct. of correcting that. Yeah. Like here, the idea is good, it just needs some fine tuning. Mm -hmm. Here, like the idea like is almost there it's on it's on the five yard line like you're within mm -hmm. field goal range and so like <laughs> some football references for you people it's more um, than field goal range yeah, it's very close that's uh that's probably like you just run it into the end zone um so yeah you absolutely could like tweak this a little bit and like make it better but there's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. And what I would say is like like condensing it a little bit more, making it a little bit shorter and more provocative and intrigue based rather than polemical. I think you're on to something. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, do you guys have time for one more? Rod, I know that you're you're literally at work. Literally at work. <laughs> you know, Alex needs to go to bed. I need to like finish a newsletter. You're at work at work. I, I am pretty sure I've, I hope I have nothing else today. I hope I haven't missed seven meetings in this stream. I'm, I, I think I'm good. Well, I mean, your your days are basically all meetings, and so I understand if you got to okay. go. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm actually good. I had a very empty day today. I, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this last one. Um, hold on. Actually, I want to do something a little differently. I saw that copywriting with Cody. Uh, she's in here. Ian Talty, are you in here? I'm looking at flights to America right now. Try Nuyen. Are you in here? Or is it Tree Nuyen? Marcos, are you in here? Are you just going to do first come, first serve? Yeah, like whoever whoever Ooh. says, like, yes, I'm here first. I'd see, I'd see, uh, Cobrab Cody was here 20 yeah. something minutes ago. Hmm. Well, if she if she left, then I'll just go in sequence. But I was just going to go to like whoever was next in sequence, but it was still here. So I'll just go with the next in sequence. So that's that. That's that. Okay. Um, all right, we'll go next. Okay. How much? Um, just quick. How how much room and what dates do you have at your house, Sean? That's available. Oh, Cody is in fact here. Yay. Hello. So we'll actually, like, let's just read your copy. Um, and actually look at it. And I, I think, I do believe she actually did one of the master classes. And oh, she did, she did a full, like, wireframe and mock up. Oh, damn. Which master class is this? The Silent Gold Rush, Shit, an e com right. marketing and copywriting master class. Damn. The Silent Gold Rush. Do we have Would that? You that, that's, that's, read, that's read, titling your masterclass to be that? I would, yes. I don't even, what is it right now? 
Oh god. Um, is that the most recent one? Yeah. Oh, Tame the Sleeping Beast. I love the thumbnail for Tame the Sleeping Beast, though. It was so cool. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Alex, Silent Gold Rush is... Kill your darlings. <laughs> yeah, the Silent Gold Rush is better. It is better. Um, we will rename it to that. I, I, I'm, I love I how, like, th this is obviously generated by AI. We use AI for all of our, our uh, little product images, too. I love how there's like the in the background there's like this like ecom like stock market thing going on. <laughs> clearly like in a mine and there's there's, there's a whole bunch uh, of gold. I do like it a lot more. <laughs> shopping cart. The fact like, that it's a shopping cart is so funny instead of like it's a perfect. treasure chest. It's perfect. Okay. Okay. So wow, look at all the the context as well. I love it. Yeah, like I mean, Cody, you're already off to a good start. You you've convinced us to change the name of a product. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. I really wanted to bring the copy to life in a wireframe for you. Smiley face emoji. But it's not an emoji. It's just this smile. Like what we would do back in like AOL chat room in 1997. <laughs> Colon bracket. Colon bracket. I made a few minor tweaks that could enhance your product page if you're open to it. Of course we are. I, I'm already loving it. One, I changed your call to action button to the green you have in your current branding since it stands out more than the brown or brown on brown. So really quick, because it's Squarespace, we're really, really limited in terms of those types yes. of functionalities. Like if I want to change the button on one page, so I nice. would need to go into the back end and like tweak basically the formatting for the whole site. It's really stupid. It's really annoying. Yeah. The Squarespace is kind of trash for that reason. So if anybody's like looking to create a website, Keep that in mind that Squarespace is good for its like drag and drop capabilities, but it's really bad if you want something that's like very customizable. Um, so that makes it limited for marketing purposes. Yeah. Also, change the font size from sixteen yeah. point uh, to sorry, Rod. What were you going to say? I was just saying that that doesn't make this. It's not a bad suggestion. It's just keep in mind that sometimes businesses have limitations and yada yada yada. Good yeah. lesson for other people. Yeah, and sometimes like when you're yeah. researching a business, you can't know what those limitations are. Like a lot of a lot of um, cold email outreach, like that's successful, is like, hey, I noticed that your business is not doing this or doing this in a stupid way. I could bet you I could make more sales if I did it this way. And the thing is, what you don't know is that a business is probably doing it in the stupid way for technical or compliance or some other reason that you were just simply not privy to um businesses suffer a lot from a problem called lock-in which is in the early days of growth you do a thing because you have to do it and then systems and processes build up around that stupid like patchwork thing that you put together the shoestring and bubble gum that you put into place to just launch something and then all of a sudden like you have a million dollars coming in and you're like well, if I fix that thing that I made at the beginning of this, it would break everything <laughs> up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a lot of businesses. And that's just something to keep in mind when you do outreach to businesses. Because a lot of the times when something is suboptimal, it's suboptimal for a reason. Where very rarely are you going to reach out to somebody and be like, hey, have you considered using your you know, email to market stuff, you know, a business is not going to be like, no, I never thought of that. <laughs> so two added a graphic to add a little, a little desire. I'm guessing it's that mm -hmm. I'm liking it so far. So good. So far. So good. Create a little mock-up to tease the course. Okay. Created a risk reversal by the CTA for the Patreon. Loving that. Ooh. No, this course is also available. Cancel any time. Ah, it's good marketing. I like it. I we might actually like steal that and do that for all of our courses. We should definitely steal that and do that for all of our courses. Cody, sorry, we're we're blatantly plagiarizing that. <laughs> no compensation for you. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, but we really aren't going to pay you for it. <laughs> no, no. We we need to feed children and you know buy. Anyway, but no. What I'm trying to say is, in a joking way, that is a good idea. Like, that's actually, that's good, what you did there. Um, I also added an additional CTA. And 
I guess we should probably compensate for that. That would be the fair thing to do if we actually did use her idea for all of our pages going forward. That is worth compensating. That, that, that's, so, that's, it, it, it might not $20. be $150, but it's $20. Yeah, definitely. $20. Have $20. You've got that. That's safe. Yeah. So I, I had to get the jokes out and I was like, all right, but for real, if you do something that adds value to us, then we should provide value to you. I also added an additional CTA so they don't have to scroll back up to purchase. Again, that might just be a limitation of Squarespace. We will try, but we'll see what happens. Less friction equals more clicks. It's absolutely true. Squarespace, get the message. But I get it. It's not a standard product page formatting. Just thought it might be worth mentioning. I love for you to check out the wireframe below. I also have the copy doc. If you want, need that, click here to view the copy doc. Let's oh, actually damn. Just wireframe. Can, I, can I say one thing though before we scroll down? Yeah. Just scroll back off for a second. Ah. I, was, I want to pick on one sentence there. Ooh. This is something, so I, I mentor a lot of people right now. And one thing I think is really important for people to get out of the habit really early are is a general category of things that's like self-deprecating or sort of like self-mitigating language. And so please do not say things like, but I get it, it's not, and then give a reason kind of against why someone might do the thing you've just suggested to them. The thing you've just suggested here, adding that second CTA, is a good idea. And you've made that suggestion out of a place of at least, I don't know how much knowledge you have, but a place of knowledge. And if you genuinely believe that that's a good idea, don't undercut your own suggestion by almost sort of like saying, oh, I understand you might not want to do it, whatever. Let the client do that for you if they don't want to do it. Um, I think sometimes it can come across as like not so confident or whatever. Um, I'm not commenting on your actual level of confidence, but don't ever feel like you need to add that in for your client's benefit. No, yeah. don't listen to him. That self-deprecation is a good thing, and you no, should no, always apologize for existence. Yeah, but like Rod, I think what you're what you're saying. Um, you know, I've managed a lot of people. I've been in a lot of business. So I've been I've been doing this for a long time. I find that that's most common for two groups of people. Yeah, women and insecure young men. Yep. Hey. Yep. And I th listen, I'm not am I am I a white knight? Am I am I like a virtue signaling type of person? No. But I have noticed that the people that are the biggest culprits of that of this self-defeating or self-effacing like, you know, oh, like, you know, don't if don't worry like that sort of like walking on eggshells kind of language. Mm -hmm. Um it's very common among like mostly among women in a workplace. And the best piece of advice that I can really give to you, like even if you you know, are a woman, even if you suffer from anxiety, things like that, mm -hmm. you really do, I'm sorry to say it in a patriarchal and sexist manner, but uh, need to nut up a little bit and like basically say like, just this is what this is and let the pieces fall where they may. Um, and sort of deprogram yourself from that a little bit, because I think that ultimately it's going to lead to better results for you, better results for your client, and a better way to interface between your future clients. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it also, like you, and I think people probably intuitively know this, but the people around you at your level are not necessarily going to be communicating in the same way, and so. What I literally tell people, and I'm sorry for everyone this, this offends, is that we all need to teach ourselves to, when we're pitching, when we're doing any sort of thing, we're, we're putting ourselves out there, is to have the confidence of a mediocre white man and just shoot your shot with no regrets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> have the confidence of a mediocre white man, Rod says, in between two demonstrably mediocre white men. <laughs> it's not, well, I'm, both at I'm, least I'm, below average. I mean... Yeah, I'm mediocre and insecure. How is that fair? <laughs> so, anyway. Um, Cody, what we're trying to say in this long spiel is you. you're a baller and a boss and everything that you've done so far is amazing. We haven't even read the copy yet. <laughs> So, like, don't undercut yourself ever. Like, never again. This is the last moment that you ever do this in your career. Or else. All right. The e Silent Gold Rush, an e-com marketing and copywriting masterclass. 20 buckaroonies. 
a rewarding opportunity for copywriters with high payouts and low competition. It doesn't matter if you're new or seasoned, this is for you. So far, so good. Join Alex, an e-commerce expert who has earned over $3.2 million combined for his clients as he shares his pioneering secrets in e-commerce to set your work apart from others in the space and justify higher rates. There's a little off rhyme there that I appreciate. If you want to move away from high competition gigs that require lots of persuasive copy, but still want to make a boatload of money, then e-commerce is likely the untapped potential you've been looking for. There's some like, um, it's more of like a line edit thing, but these sensors are all like very long. And I think it would flow, it would feel the logical flow would make a little bit more sense if they were broken up a bit. Um, but the content's fine for me. I think I like most of that. There's one disconnect there that's bugging me. And the disconnect is that it's kind of similar to what we usually say, which is like, who are you speaking to right now? Mm -hmm. Look at that last paragraph. If you want to, if you want to move, don't do that, Sean. Uh, if you want to move away from high competition gigs that require lots of persuasive copy, but still want to make a buttload of money, that make that implies that you are talking to someone who, like, is already like actively doing copywriting. Then e-commerce is likely the untapped potential you've been looking for. What I want to know is. Is this, are you talking to someone who is just getting into copywriting? Are you talking to someone who is, who has already got a niche or is already kind of getting gigs, but they want to like transfer to something else? Um, my gut tells me that the kind of person this is going to do better or is going to be more persuasive to is the kind of person who hasn't yet done anything and is looking for their, you know, their, their niche, if you like. Um, there's nothing wrong with targeting either of those groups, but choose one of them. Mm -hmm. That's the only disconnect for me so far is that like we're talking about you can justify higher rates but you're effectively saying to do that you need to move niche and this isn't quite leaning into hey move over all the way to e-commerce like ditch what you're doing and move to e-com this is more kind of straddling the line between um you know oh if you're new this could be good and if you're existing you know it might be worth considering doing this and it's slightly i think because you're kind of balancing between those two it doesn't have the punch it potentially could have Having said that, I still think the messages you're striking out at are quite good. So for example, you know, you use like, this is why I say in the thing, this is untapped. Like that's great, you know, because a big problem people have is like, oh, isn't it oversaturated? But saying this is untapped and setting you apart from a competition, like that's a fantastic thing to lean into. Good you angle. use the proof, yeah, 100%. Use the proof that, you know, I've earned a lot of money from doing this and I'm sharing, you know, my unique pioneering secrets. To, 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 to allow you to justify higher rates. I think there is a lot of good in here. And honestly, I just think switching up that last paragraph and maybe maybe taking out, it doesn't matter if you're new or seasoned, because I think that's maybe making me a bit unsure of what, if I should be doing like reading on or not. I would still, I'm still happy with this so far. So I'm not saying yeah, this is bad, like it is good, but yeah. slight disconnect. Cody, that's, that's just a, like a small tweak. Like, yeah. I, I'm sure you understand like what we're trying to say. Oh, true. I was trying to talk to both because uh, I said it doesn't matter if you're seasoned or new. I was trying to appeal to both, which violates the one reader. That's my bad for sure. But you, you've you've recognized it though, and like I'm, you know, I'm not saying you can't talk to two kinds of people. It's just the thing you're then going on to say is trying to focus on one, and that mm -hmm. like throws me off a little bit. Um, but yeah, but but no, like I definitely with one tweak or two, we're all good. Love this. Results aren't guaranteed, but Alex is managed to yeah, like that a lot. That's especially yeah. in my character, so yeah. So. Yeah, and I've basically already promised that we're going to pay you $10 a word for this. So that's going... $10 a word. $10 a word for those that's two. That's almost 150 Oh, right, for those two. Okay, right. For, for <laughs> this. <laughs> we're paying you for that, for sure. But everything you've done so far is really good. Monthly revenue share... $3,980.44 for roughly two hours of work for a week. Ah, oh, see, now, I, again, the idea here is good for me. The way you've, the way you've written it out was a little bit confusing. Yes. That's my only criticism here is like, I don't know what that means looking at it. If you were to say, um, uh, like, 
even just in quotes, like, Ecom made me 3,900 HU for roughly two hours of work a week. Boom, yeah. like, you've got it. The idea is good. The execution, I think, is a tiny bit off. But again, nothing that three seconds typing can't fix. Yeah. Yeah, it just, like, that's a, that's a mild tweak. Huh. Pretty good so far. Even though most copywriters will tell you that margins are razor thin and there's no money to be made in e-commerce, that's false. People who say that just don't know how to leverage it to earn incomes like these. Screen pulled from your actual presentation. <laughs> yeah. This high demand skill makes you a valuable asset to businesses looking to boost online sales. Wait, hold on. This high demand skill. What is that referencing? You're doing the it this sin of not making it obvious. You could just say ecom copywriting, for example. Yeah. Or ecom copywriting is a high demand skill that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So ecom uh, copywriting is a high demand skill mm -hmm. that makes you a valuable asset to businesses looking to boost online sales. And because of that, it gives you the ability to command higher rates because businesses are willing to pay a premium for skilled e-commerce copywriters. And by skilled, I don't mean you have to be a veteran. You just have to know the basics of copywriting and apply what Alex teaches you in this masterclass. Ah, okay. So good so far. And you'll already be worlds ahead of the current e-com writers. I would rephrase that a little bit, but everything up to that point was actually really good. You don't even have to be that persuasive. You just need to help the customer verify that they are making the right purchase. Let's take a look at what you'll see here. I would rephrase this. You don't even yeah. have to be that yeah. persuasive. Oftentimes, it can be as simple as helping a customer find out if a product is right for them. I Yeah, and again, I think, honestly, with this, Cody, I think that there's so much in here that you're doing right. There's a couple of things that just miss where I'm like, if you just said this other thing, like it would be a home run. Yeah. But again, it's just like the other one that we reviewed. It's not enough for me to go like, oh, no, like throw this away. Like, because there, there's like some high class shit in here for sure. Yeah. The, how, like, we've done like 20 of these so far. Like, how many times do we actually make it to the bullets? Yeah. And the fact that Not we did it twice in one stream. Like, this is like <laughs> lightning fucking striking. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this first bullet, though, this this was an homage to you, Alex, and what had to be killed. <laughs> Why Ecom is the sleeping beast of freelance copywriting and how mastering it can skyrocket your earnings. Yes, I like that. Because that, <laughs> that's a metaphor that I came up with, so I like that a sword lot. emoji in the end, too. <laughs> uh, yes, put a sword emoji in a dragon, and I will love it even more. <laughs> Exposed. Why e-commerce is criminally underrated. This will give you a competitive edge and potentially higher income. Mm -hmm. Stealing from the gods. Alex reveals his secret as to how he dominates e-com niches and how you can replicate his success for significant financial gains. These are solid. And you know what I also like is you're using like my chapter titles from the product. Oh, is which... that what that is? Yeah, so like, but then, again, I know I'm blowing my own trap here, but like, it's good copy because I've done it, you know, to be like an intriguing. It's good copy because you wrote it. Because <laughs> like, that's what I mean. I, mean, I don't mean to blow my own trap here, but like, you it's good copy. Narcissist. I, if I'm not, if I, if I'm trying to teach how to do copywriting and I don't sound my own copy is good, then what's the point? But anyway, uh, what I was trying to say is why I don't see a lot of people doing these is I don't see them reference the product enough. And that's what you're doing. And like, you've seen that, okay, that copy is fucking brilliant. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to use it. Oh, I've sobered up quite a bit, but I'm still, there's still a bit there. Um, but you're like, anyway, point is you're taking stuff that already exists and being like, okay, I can see the potential for using that in a bullet. Like, that's great. You're using what's already there. Fantastic. Yeah. <sighs> Turn on the money tap. How to find good niches for e-commerce to ensure yours is profitable. Find out why e-com gigs are the easiest job hunt ever. And Alex reveals a simple four-step system to do just that. Do just what? Hunt for jobs? Yeah. That is, yeah, that is what I refer to, yeah. 
to but, find but it doesn't them. say hunt for jobs it's, yeah it's yeah. there's definitely there's a few like it's some polish there's polish yeah. that's needed like, this it's it's like it's a rough diamond like we're looking at a rough mm -hmm. diamond here oh man if you want to pitch with confidence, you do not want to miss this. The exact process Alex uses to pitch e-commerce business owners that allows you to close more lucrative deals. Solid bullet. 80% of e-com hinges on this very important concept that is far more effective than just creating light bulb moments. Okay. I don't know what that means. I don't either. Alex, do you know what this means? What did you say at exactly 5610 in your masterclass that led to this? 80% of e-com hinges on this very important concept. Dude, I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> I can't even remember why I've said this stream. I, I think I must be talking about, like... I think I just say 8% of e-commerce is basically just... Just showing people the door and, like, just saying, Hey, just go that way. Like, go that way, go that way. I talk about, you know, it's not about persuasion. It's about, it's about confirmation. That might be what it is. I can't remember. Um look like a conversion rate genius and impress your clients hint it involves utilizing two underused e-commerce powerhouses hmm. i don't know what that is one thing that can help because I, I've, I've been noticing a lot of these senses where it's like something 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 and something else and then you go on to sort of like reference that first sentence if you can combine these first two bits so like Impress, say, instead of saying look like a conversion rate genius and impress your clients, say impress your clients by looking like a conversion rate genius. Yeah. Just, you know, mm -hmm. qualify that first part and then go into the second part. Um, and because yeah. a couple of these other bullets have had the same problem, and then you get in trouble with like the, you've basically, you're missing a gerund or something. Um, just, just do that. It's, it's easier to read, it's easier to reference, whatever. Yeah. But like again, it's like what I was <laughs> technical. Yeah. Plastic. It's 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 a nitpick. Like the idea is good. The the core of it is good. I can see a, a universe where this copy would convert well. Yeah. And so like even even in the absence of like that polished perfection, like I can see it working. Like Yeah. Especially, especially if you point people who are already kind of interested in ecom copy or ecom here, they'd be like, "Oh shit, yeah, like this is what I want." Um, the last thing is copper oxide, though, not copper dioxide. Just a, Ooh. just a note. Oh, you put one too many oxygens on the molecule. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to die. We just want to ox -ide. Um, the covert product description formula for irresistible copy. Most copywriters follow the info route which leads to high competition. But if you want to access a broad range of clients and not end up limited to traditional saturated niches, all while having potential long-term career security, then the skills you will gain in this masterclass can help put you on that path. That's a good, I like that. I love that you're positioning against popular advice that most people have heard, which is do courses and do info products and do financial. You're like, th that's great. You know, so often sometimes people just need to hear the, the big thing they've been hearing loads and saying, don't listen to that, listen to this. That's a good ending. I would almost say to you that idea is worth putting right at the top. Like in like the yeah. first blurb above yeah. the fold, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would allude to it earlier for sure. Yeah. And then, like, you can spell it out there. But, like, definitely teasing that up in here yep. is worth doing. Yeah. I I think I want to buy some copy. You know what I'm going to do? I want to say to Cody, I will pay you $150 for this copy if you're willing to watch the video and punch up slash polish the bits that we've said. Rewind. And, and and edit the best to the best of your abilities, regardless of what comes out the other end, I will still buy this because I still think that this is that this is good enough. And that is something that ninety five percent of people don't achieve. Oh yeah. Well I, mean, I I feel like I think or not I feel like it is definitely a criteria for I think everyone we've thought from anyway that we've had them go back and do other edits. So Yeah. I fully trust that Cody will do that for us. Cody, may we buy your copy? Respond in the chat. Funny, she was like, "Nah, <laughs> nah, I just did this for fun." 
Shouldn't show my credit card on the street. Cody. Oh, right. shit. Actually, that, I feel like throwing $50 bills at a woman is a little dehumanizing. I shouldn't do that. Money. Way to go, Sean. <laughs> Cody, you did an excellent and superlative job. Really, seriously. Like, that was great. You and Hayato, you did an excellent job. Like, Hayato, he worked for it. Like, that that was a lot of revisions. And he earned that money. But, Cody, you came out and, like, like this Actually, is, like, within, like, an arm's length of being done. It just requires some polish that you seem to already understand. So, guys, everybody, like, congratulate Cody because she just whipped ass. Not only did she earn the $150 for writing the copy that we're going to publish after she revises it, but she also earned an extra $20 for simply coming up with a simple marketing yeah. idea that we can implement across our website. Two words. That's two words. How, how long did that take you to write? Was that like two seconds and you just earned $10 a second? That's like Bill Gates money. Probably it, Bill Gates probably earns more than that. It takes you a second to write a single word? Cancel. Yeah. I'm, I'm quick money. I'm quick money gang, dude. You, old, wow. you oldies. Come on, young people can type well fast in it um i was also going to say well done for just mocking this up like this is yeah. a delight to read yeah like straight uh, up so like that that's kind of a um a secret thing that you can really do uh, especially for a lot of your copy if you're going to be writing website copy is just kind of mock it up for free in canva because it mm. clearly shows the vision that you have and like not like not, this looks like our page. This looks like how it would look if we yeah. were to publish it, and that sort of like makes us like imagine us publishing it already, which certainly helps boost it a little bit. So, yeah, wow. I, could I just say Canva is like the best software I think I've ever used? Really? Like, mm, oh god, do you not love it? I love Canva. It's so useful. Microsoft Excel. Sorry. Yeah, well, that's because you're not. <laughs> You would you would get on with the CEO of my company so well, like he he's so, he's so good at Excel. Um, anyway, well done, Cody. Yeah, well done. I, like well done, Hayato. Like well done to everybody. Like we read yeah. some really good copy today. Woo, copy. Wow, woo, co woo, copy. <laughs> <laughs> woo, copy. I think that's a good spot to to like kill it for uh, tonight. There's one. Uh, John Cornelius responded to us. He gave us a nice hey, little thing. I posted it in our chat if you want to look at it. In our chat. Oh, um, how do we get that out? I can just read it out loud if you guys yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, do that. So, John says, Thanks for reviewing my copy. I actually could just about cry right now. Those were the nicest comments about my copy you've given me since I started copywriting December last year. LOL. P.S. The emails were defo lifts. I've been doing a lot of swiping, which massively helps. John, you are a baller and a boss, and we so appreciate having you and so appreciate being just a small part of your journey in this yeah. wild and wacky world of copywriting. So thank you for sharing your words with us and allowing mm -hmm. us to basically participate in your growth and success. So thank you very much. Awesome. And seriously like thank everybody for you know putting yourselves out there, for writing copy and putting yourselves out there and like making an effort because honest to god that really like it's so cliche but it really does make the biggest difference just getting started and actually putting pen to paper and getting a review like everybody who does this is just absolutely a pimp um, except for the people that we didn't get to. Obviously, you all are losers in this. Yeah, you should post sooner. And yep, I think I still yeah, owe some of you streams. And yeah. Yeah. all the copy we saw is you're a winner, but all the copy we didn't see clearly terrible. <laughs> some of that, I mean, they lost to like an abortion conversation, though. How could you ever win? That. Oh. Also, I've just gone back on it. Did you guys see my photo from earlier from the pub? Uh, yes. How cool is that? <laughs> um, so just for context, in our company chat, um, 
Alex posted a picture of him having a beer in front of a lovely fireplace that has the inscription. Let me read this. J.R.R. Tolkien, 1892 to 1973, visited this pub for some word for writing The Hobbit. How cool is that? Inspiration. Ah. Yeah. So he wrote, he he went there. It's the um, oh the uh the prancing pony is it in Lord of the Rings, the the pub that they go into. I, I think it, I think it's it the prancing, prancing pony. pony actually. Yeah, I think it is. But anyway, like that was inspired by that pub, and he also wrote some of I think the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings in that pub. Um, and Oliver Cromwell stopped off in there as well. Uh, it's like hundreds of years old, and it's just cool in front of the same fireplace that they sat at having a beer. You know, and then coming to stream with my friends and give people money because their copywriting is awesome. I, I am love my no life. fan of Oliver Cromwell nor his orange men. <laughs> well, but th that's like my people. Yeah, your people killed my people. You you you're wait, you're Scottish, right? You're and then Irish. we both colonize Rod's people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what this is God. <laughs> We've had abortions. We've had racism. We've had <laughs> genocide. We've had demonetization. <laughs> oh I, boy! I, I told kids to go do drugs and have sex. Like this has been that stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh. 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 Guys, this has been a this was this was a delight. I love it when the three of us can get on stream. I love it even more when all four of us are on stream together. But yes. yeah. Want Lindsay back? Because well. then we could have done even more. Like the chain could have been like, you know, Alex and me at war, and then like I was just like, and then we colonize Rod, and then Rod could be like, and we all are sexist towards Lindsay. <laughs> we all hate women. Yeah. Um. Don't clip that. Uh... <laughs> don't tell people not to clip the thing. See, like CT the clips. <laughs> I, That's I the, think we, we uh, would beat the misogyny charges. We had a whole segment where we specifically said that we need to empower women to have self confidence and yada 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 because they're great. So you know, oh, that wasn't irony. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> good God! <laughs> oh, I'm joking. That's I'm joking. Going to put a cancel, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm only kidding. Oh, uh, yeah, it's 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 tough to it's. And I realized this. So we had an interaction earlier on our on our Discord where um, a person was like, "Hey, Alex, is it true that you're 14 years old?" Oh yeah, that um, was funny. And it was like it was in that moment that I realized, like, oh, the people that listen to us and watch us don't understand when we're joking. Like, don't understand <laughs> when we're being like ironic or like goofing uh, around. Because he, yeah, he was like, "Are you? Is it true you're 14?" Uh, and I was like, uh, I think I just replied 12. Uh, and he was like, oh, wow. He's like, you look quite a bit older. And I was like, I can't let this go on. I feel like I'm bullying someone just by going along with the joke. So I was like, I'm actually 23. And he's like, oh, in that case, you look way younger. And I was like, I don't know which one I'm more offended by. Uh, <laughs> so that was good fun. But no, I, I'm not I'm not 14. As much as I, as much as I wish I was earning this much when I was 14, that it's, it's not true. I was really not money motivated when I was 14. And you shouldn't um, have been. Yeah. I, I was, yeah. I like, agree. It would have just been on, you know, Pokemon cards and vodka. Um, and yeah, I don't want to go into when I was 14. Um, but it was fun, you know. When I was 14, I was learning how to code an online multi-user dungeon called Cyber Assault. Wow, mods. Yeah. I was uh. I was smashing windows. That's crazy. And we yeah. still ended up in the same place. Mm. <laughs> yeah, on, a, on a live stream critiquing copy. <laughs> it's, how did this happen? Is that, is that a happy occurrence? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm very glad to be here. Thanks, guys. All right. uh, we are glad that you're here too, though. Please don't smash any of my windows. Not now. That was when we went out. Me, so my, I was saying this in the pub earlier. No, was I? Or the other day? Me and my friends went out, and we. This is not a good thing to say, because I don't want to encourage any children who are watching this, which are a few. 
judging by our Discord server. Um, we, you shouldn't carry knives, um, is the first <laughs> thing to say. But that was what we did at the time in the part of England where I grew up. Uh, and one of them had a window spike on them, and I was a as a was a. I'm not gonna continue this conversation. Well, we all know where you're gonna conclude it. You smashed a window, you asshole. That was not my fault. I that was societal pressure, and <laughs> and, and a lack of I hate liberals. and a lack of money. This and... sense of personal responsibility. You're a victim of the system. Yes, he speaks the truth. Um, and I, I, well, I couldn't write a landing page yet, so I was very frustrated at that. Uh, <laughs> Everyone thought I was like 18 or 20, even though I was only 14. Um, I I shouldn't drink and come on stream. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lesson I've learned today. I, I thought you were delightful. I, I, I thought the, the banter between you and me was, was just hilarious. And then Rod being like the sort of like stoic middleman just disappointed <laughs> in us both. Like it was the perfect balance of comedy. I... Yeah, we need to drink again. I mean, Sean, I think we may have mentioned the stream before, but the la I think the last time we got drunk together, we were debating ancient Roman politics, um, which we're not going to get back into because we'll, we'll just disagree again. Um, but I, I recall Sean being right, though. I, I it was. Oh, this <laughs> fucks me off so bad. And then Rod, we were arguing about something. Uh, what's his face sounding like the Keebler elf or something? Rob Halford. Yeah, from from Judas Priest. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were arguing about. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We were having this long like conversation about the Roman Empire at a bar called the Rabbit Club, yes. which is like a cellar beer bar that's in like the Comedy District of New York. It's a no tourist ever goes there. It's an amazing it's like down bar. a random staircase. It's hard yeah. to find because <laughs> we were there with John. Yeah. So yeah. it was like uh John uh from the CC, it was Rod, it was me, it was Alex. And so we sort of paired off because there's no there's room to like sort of sneak your yeah, way like down the line and then a row of seats and then the bar. So it's like like one of those like sushi places in like Tokyo where it's like there's just no room to move. So like we couldn't have a four uh, we couldn't have a four way. You know, we had to like pair off and you know that and so we were like drinking beer and then alex and i were talking about the roman empire and then john and rod were talking what were you guys talking about by the way we weren't talking john was on the other side of you guys with bailey and i was just sitting there yes enjoying the ambiance <laughs> i apologize for not including Judas you in the in no the, it was the... completely fine i, en I enjoyed the ambiance but at one point judas priest came on and alex is a really big fan of judas priest and rod was just like what the fuck is yeah. this music? Painkiller. It was like pain a goddamn killer. gremlin. <laughs> so fucking painkiller comes on. The drums like doo -doo 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 -doo. like the fucking drum start like oh fucking love this song. And then you know I was like first without a bullet. Like he starts to sing that, and Rod's just like he's clearly taken aback. And he was like like what is this gremlin dude? Because that's how like the Americans sound. Uh, and I was like this is one of the the greatest metal singers of all time. And I think the bar, the bar, uh, the barman come over as well and was like, I think he he caught wind of our debate and he was on my side because it was his music. <laughs> um, and weirdly enough, there was a beer there from the town where I was living earlier on in my analogy when I was young and, and smashing windows. There was a beer from that town in that bar. How weird is that? Found it all the way to New York. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that. It was the banana bread no, beer. I, I, remember, yeah, I remember. I remember. It was very fun. Yeah. yeah, it was. So that beer bar, if you guys are ever in New York City, uh, go to the Rabbit Club. It is delightful. I took I took all of them to three of my favorite, like oh, they were awesome. non non touristy, like out of the beaten path bars in Manhattan. Um, and uh, that was a really wonderful night. That was a good time. That was a great night. That was really fun. <laughs> Brought to remember well, something else. Dance and you fell. It was, it was, oh that's, that's, yeah, that is actually the best copy of that content of all time. Oh yeah, and only like 120 people have watched that. Oh god, yeah, we did put that online. That should be a clip. No. 
<laughs> it doesn't need to be a clip. Um, yeah, that was fun. That whole that whole trip. I, I was I was just looking at flights to come to come over after Christmas. Actually, um, I may do because that would be quite fun. Yeah, you and Callum are more than welcome to come over. So please, thank you. We may do. Um, damn. I mean, it's now got to the part. It's always past the two hour mark. We're always like just chatting. And yeah. There's still like 19 people watching. God bless you all. Yeah. Um. Just real quick, tree, try, tree. Uh, we will critique your copy, just not today. So you didn't actually miss it; you just missed it today. Yeah, we will get there. Uh, that that is one of the limitations of doing this, reviewing them on stream, is that we just can't get to everybody. And so uh, I apologize, but we will try to do it next time or in the future. Um, also, truth, right here. Um, go go and listen to British Steel, Rod, the album, which was I like the ones I have Rob in chat. I think they're just misspelling my name. No, <laughs> go and listen Rod, to. You are a metal god. You yeah, I want to hear you sing like Rob Halford the next time we're there. I got really into uh, Sleep Token a couple months ago. Sleep Token. Sleep Token. You guys know them? Oh, they were popular on TikTok. <laughs> well, that that that'll be why I don't know them. I I have never had the app TikTok on my phone. Neither have I, but you know I know people who are pop, who are active on TikTok. I yeah no I don't I go and listen to some new wave British heavy metal. Yeah, I don't know if I will. <laughs> that that's a good response. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. I'd prefer no, I prefer not to. Fucking Bartleby be over here. Fair enough. I can't. I can't really <laughs> argue with that. Uh, oh. oh my goodness! God damn. Uh, and too Spotify. Funny. Spotify wrapped was out today, so go and look at those as well. Oh yeah, I, I did that. I was not surprised. My Spotify wrap oh, was basically my writing playlist. So. Yeah, like mine was four. I expected, and then there was one song where I was like, "What the fuck?" And I realized it was the it's the first song in my workout playlist, and I was like, "Oh, that's why." Um, but yeah, it's uh. It's a great idea. Like people, I I genuinely believe people just a lot of people will just use Spotify because they do wrapped because yeah. they want to be able to show it off at the end of the year. Do we? Are we still posting TikTok? Or are we just posting on IG right now? I'm in charge of that. I guess I've been trying to figure out like how to delegate and like systematize that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I need to do is like one cross reference everything that we have on TikTok versus what we have on YouTube mm -hmm. Shorts or Reels. Then I need to download the stuff that we have on shorts that hasn't been posted to TikTok. Then I need to upload it to TikTok. Then I need to schedule it. It's a, it's a whole freaking thing. And it's one of those things where just like the like, is the juice worth the squeeze? Do I want to devote an yeah. entire afternoon doing this? Uh, well, yeah, Can we delegate Thanks. that. I, I would love to if we could figure out a way, but mm -hmm. also like I want to like sort of record or at least systematize like okay this is yeah. what i'm doing here this is why i'm doing it these are the tags i'm using this is how the scheduler the scheduler works yada 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 so yeah it's hard yeah, I mean, to, yeah. cody you're, you're absolutely right it, it's good for outreach it would you know we just small business problems we could probably like hoot sweet it or something but <sighs> i i was looking up a zapier integration and yeah. it's it's just it mm, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I yeah. yeah. People don't. I don't. Don't think people realize how much work copy that is behind the scenes to like maintain consistently. And like Sean, obviously, you've always you've always been driving that. And then last month, you you were busy, so I took the reins of that. And I was like, God, there's so much to like worry about and plan and and stuff. Um, I was talking to. Oh, I should probably plug this for anyone watching. Uh, there's another YouTube channel called The Fix. Um, who are the, the fix copywriting. If you just type that in, it'll come up really great guys. Sean and I, um, know them, uh, and they, they specifically, they kind of, they tend to, uh, revolve around the, uh, the fi the finance world, but, um, but they do, they just kind of teach people how to do general copywriting. And I was talking to Glenn the other day, cause I interviewed him and then he interviewed me. So they'll be up in a couple of weeks. Uh, but I was speaking to him and I'm like, God, we think like copy that is bootstrapped. Like the fix is, you know, they do like their own editing. Uh, they play around with like Zoom and like it's like what we did 
or what you guys did three years ago. Like they're they're still there, and it made me god like God. I'm so glad we have Noah and Nicole and you know and Kaylee and etc. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, we've grown enough to be able to pay other people to take some of the workload off of us, but we haven't made mm -hmm. enough to be like, okay, you you're the person in charge of the this stuff. Yeah. I've edited my own videos. It's brutal, says Cody. Yeah, it is. It's annoying. Um, yeah. I my my I can do like I did all the ecom adventure ones, and I, I've done a couple of mine that have gone up on Patreon, and I think a couple of shorts have gone up on YouTube. I did um, Premiere Pro. I can do the very basics, but it's just it just takes time. Like that's the big thing. It's time. It just takes so long. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's true. Any anything else you guys wanna wanna cover before we we hop off? Rod, how how does it feel to work in a a job in an office space where you can just be like, yeah, I'm just gonna peace out for three hours and yeah, like... that's bullshit. Can I just say what the f ha like? That's amazing that you can do that. Well, I mean, it's it's like so gay dependent. Uh, it just so happens we're in like a kind of slow period right now. Nice. Honestly, if I didn't have this to do, I would have to just be doing like kind of generic research on a potential pitch I potentially will get added to <laughs> in a week or so. Um, so this is great. Yeah, fantastic. Um, sometimes it's literal hell though, where I have like 20 things to do at once and only five fingers. You only have one hand? Only, yeah. What happened to your other hand? Well, it's, you know. Is that like the, the ritual to get in? They're like you're dedicated to defeat now. I oh, think you maybe you're like, oh, no. <laughs> sneakers or trainers, oh, as they're called. Um, any uh, any Nike news, Rod? Any Just Nike that. news? Any um, Nike news? Strong, Nike. strong Q3. Profits are higher than expected. That's great. Hey, nice. Shareholders nice. are happy about dividend payments. Are they? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug Sean as well. Not like that. Um, but anyone, <laughs> anyone who doesn't know, you should go and check out DIY Wealth, the YouTube channel, because oh, hey. the the video that Sean just posted on that is one entertaining as hell, two cute as hell, and three also extremely informative and just just generally interesting. So go and go and YouTube, go and YouTube DIY Wealth. Callum Sean has been watching them. Um, and like he's he's been loving them, uh, oh, so cool. yeah, they're super fun. Uh, really, I yeah, go to my other channel DIY Wealth, and and you'll get more of me, except talking about finance instead of copy, which is what I do most of my day anyway. Where do I send my revisions? Just DM it to us, any one of us, or all three of us, maybe I guess. Um, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, we'll we'll look at your revisions, um, and then give you the thumbs up or thumbs sideways or thumbs down, and uh, then in that conversation you can DM us your uh, payment information, preferably PayPal, and uh, you good to go. And we'll send you money. Yeah. Awesome. I am. I am have two videos in the pipeline for DIY wealth that are, I think, kind of crazy. Is one the the MF one? I don't know if you want to give it away on. So one is with Mark Ford, where yeah. it's a sort of like dramatization of an essay he wrote many years ago, where he talks about how like every decision in your life can make you richer or poorer. And I actually got him in a restaurant. Like we rented a whole restaurant and filmed like an interaction between him and I. And yeah, that, that was really cool. And then like we went to his cigar bar and I filmed like the whole video essay portion of that. Um, yeah, and that's going to come out really good. I also recorded a video called uh, very simply Lamborghini versus minivan. And I got <laughs> a real Lamborghini and I got a real minivan and I put them both at the test. So, yeah. And you also hired you, you, you mentioned you respected women earlier in this stream. Yes. That video may, <laughs> that video may, uh, or the thumbnail of that video, I'm sure, may raise suspicions. But it's also it's it's actually very good when you get down to it. Yeah. The, so, 
at, at one point, um, I do have six. I hired six supermodels to be in bikinis for this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, I love it. And um, at one point in the the video essay portion of it, because we're going through like a sort of playful competition between the Lamborghini and the minivan. Um, at one point, I have one of the models ask, "Why are we in bikinis?" And basically, they call. I had I scripted it so that they would call me out on being sexist, and then those they sort of like take over the video and the testing process, and then it just goes off the rails from there. <laughs> and then the video ends with a drag race between a minivan and a Lamborghini. <laughs> if the minivan doesn't win, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. I guess you'll just have to. Have to watch the video <laughs> I can't wait for it. I can't so, wait for yeah. that. I'm doing some fun stuff there. That channel is not growing nearly as fast as I needed to to justify the massive expense it is. Or maybe I just need to do simpler videos. <laughs> that probably no. is one. Oh, no, no. Uh, but you don't want to kill your soul. Um, but yeah, go and subscribe to everyone if you haven't. It's just also, it's good copy as well. You know, go and go and look at the scripts. Like, go and look at the pages they link to. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, one thing I, I feel like we don't stress enough or the world doesn't trust enough is that good copy is always rooted in good ideas. And one thing I really appreciate about the DIY, DIY wealth videos is that like the sort of core ideas that you're, that you're trying to like get around to explaining are always so like simple and easy to understand. And then it makes really good content, but that like the entertaining part couldn't happen without like the really strong, like conceptual grounding. You're going to make me cry. Shut up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let, let, what, what's coming out and copy that for the next month, guys? Well, tomorrow we have an interview with a mystery guest. Oh yeah. Um. So we we found um a guy who started copywriting at the age of seventeen and has already passed the seven figure point. So has earned a million dollars of copywriting. So I spoke to him. Um for about an hour and a half, two hours, and just sort of asked him what that looked like, what motivated him, like what, like what got him there, uh, things like that. That's coming out tomorrow. Cool. Uh, next week, the video that we have in the pipeline is, we did a whole like behind the scenes of our yes, business and like how we grew copy that and how we made it what it was. So there's that. That's fun. I like that one. You guys should look forward to that one. We literally show you our financial records. Yeah. Yes, we do. It's uh, true. It's true, and uh, it's it's a very funny number, actually. <laughs> fucking hilarious, and it's true. It's true. And then there's your masterclass, right? And then after that, I I did a whole like stream where I just wrote emails and like talked people through our um, Black Friday campaign. So in three weeks, that's going to come out. We're going to do like an edited, sort of slightly slimmed down version of that because. I did start to lose my mind at around the two hour point. And As per. At, at one point I actually did break out into song, like in the middle of writing. Oh, I didn't like, see that bit. I will have to watch that again. Yeah, it's I, I went a little insane. Um, but everybody who's seen it says that it was really good and really helpful. And like one person like wrote that like I was confused about emails and like I watched the stream and now I have like a full portfolio. Like your thing helped me out a lot. And so I was like, oh, that's great. Dope. That's why I'm doing this. So that's great. That's awesome. Um, and then, so, and the reason why I wanted to get that edited before we re-release it, why it's like not on the page right now, is because as I was going through and showing people the stats of the emails that we've released, I accidentally revealed other people's email addresses. <laughs> not good. Yeah. I it was it was one of those moments moments where I was like, oh, Sean, you're such a dipshit. God damn it. <laughs> We've all done it. And then, yeah, that's the next three weeks. That's, yeah, that is the next three weeks. Um, we have the Glenn Fisher interview coming out after that as well. Yeah, after that, Glenn Fisher. Yeah. He's cool. I he's also cool. just did an interview with Kira Hug and Rob Allen. Uh, Rob Allen? Oh, God, I forget his name. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, for TCC, the Copywriter Club. Um, oh, that's why I know her. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a podcast, and uh, they just recorded an hour-long interview with me. So that's cool. Nice. Yeah. I'm like I'm actually genuinely interested in hearing that one. Well, that 
Yeah. So they just wanted to. So okay, they were both at the Todd Brown Copy Legends thing, mm-hmm. and I, I I got on one about AI, mm-hmm. and so they were just like teeing me up a bunch of AI questions, and I was just like, oh, this AI thing is. I just gave my typical sort of rants and sort of explained like what people need to be thinking about. We also talked a little bit about recessions, how businesses, how copywriters can sort of steal themselves against that. My big thing for that podcast that I feel bad about is that I, when I go on stream, a lot of people sort of like make fun of me for using very big words or having a really (laughs) robust vocabulary. I dumb it down on live stream. Yep. What a dick. I, I really, I lower what I'm doing so that I can talk to you in a sort of reason for that podcast. Um, I just didn't think to try to change my speech in such a way. And so I got real technical and like real in the weeds in certain places. And I'm a little nervous about that. I want to know Rob Marsh. I mean, Rob Marsh. I think it, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, awesome. it's mostly because I enjoy the really technical language <laughs> and appreciate the nuance and stuff. And so, if for no one else, I'll enjoy it more. So Alex has been in the middle of conversations between Rod and I, where Rod and I will just be somewhere here in the ether, and Alex will just be like, "What in the?" ever loving hell are you two even talking about these words like i don't even know the words that's the problem like Like, i can't even (laughs) yeah like (sighs) for real i i had a video meeting with evan and actually use this word in context amanus amanuesis casual conversation amanuesis what is that amanuensis what the fucking what is that what is amanuensis (laughs) Google it. What was the word from earlier? A polemic. Because it How annoys me. That? What's a man you ends a man a man you? I'm an anemone. A, a, a letter a literary or artistic assistant. Just fucking say assistant. Just say art assistant. No, it's a specific kind. That's why you need a new word for it. Employed to write or type what another dictates, or to copy what's been written by another. That's just yeah. a typist. Yeah. <sighs> Annoying, man. Uh, <laughs> just like I didn't grow. I didn't. I didn't. Le- I. I didn't learn big words. I learned. You learned the language of the streets. <laughs> yeah, I learned. <laughs> we had window spikes. <laughs> uh, um, oh. oh, my. Anyway. But yeah, what, but we, anyway, we've got the Glenn Fisher interview. We've got the Rob Marsh and Kira Hug interviews. Um, Glenn Fisher's really cool. He's he he very much aligns with what we do on Copy That. Yeah. Um, I'm also cool. going to be on their channel. Sean, I believe you're going to interview Nick O'Connor. Nick O'Connor is going to interview you. We've got those. That'd be amazing. I need to reach out to organized. him. I, yeah. So I have worked with Glenn and Nick in mm-hmm. passing in an, well, at one point in a very detailed way. They're they're fucking lovely. They're they're good people and really totally worth learning from. So yeah, yeah. Cool. There's a there's a like a siren song in the background now. Oh, sorry, that's me. There's a concert happening probably 20 feet from me. I hate because you. that happens in the middle of the building. <laughs> I'm convinced that Rod doesn't work at a real place. <laughs> he's in he's in he's Here, at Willy look, Wonka's look. chocolate factory. This is like, like a soundproof booth right now, so I'm gonna open the door and it's gonna be like way louder. Oh God. Well, maybe not way louder, but just like if I were at my desk, I would just be huge ass loud ambient music that I actually don't really want to listen to. Yeah. Because this it's not is, important for people yeah. here to focus on my work. This is why people don't take marketers seriously. I get stick because of people like you. <laughs> because you're in your office listening to a concert and I'm like, working eating... really hard right now, okay? Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. No, I mean like in this moment, literally, this is me working really hard at my job. Uh, guys, I'm just jealous. <laughs> would you rather earn money as a brand copywriter, like <laughs> getting free concerts at your cool, amazing Portland office, or Soundproof would you rather be a bald, pasty, tired, <laughs> 40 year old direct response copywriter who's just under a mountain of pressure all the time? 
Uh, yeah. We're not... If, if we were smarter, we'd be in Rod's position. <laughs> um, proof booth. I know, but Sean would would not enjoy this. What's up? There, there are some there, there are some fun gigs, but it's it's a very different process working within a bureaucracy. Yeah, mm. I I have worked in bureaucracies before. And Rod, you and I have like talked <laughs> with each other about this before, but like, I uh, yeah, brand copywriting is it's just not for me. Like, I love the generating ideas, and that's basically what you get paid for. But like, I love generating ideas without having to attend any more <laughs> than one meeting. Per three days. Yeah. 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 So. Great perks, though. Yeah. I fucking bet. Yeah. Free shoes. Well, 50% Have off shoes. Have you been shoes. on a shoot yet? So have I been? A sh oh, no. I don't get to go on shoots. If I were, So if I were, like, an actual, like, copywriter or art director, I would. But the strategists don't get to go. We just, yeah. like, come up with the ideas. Then they come up with the vision. And then they get to go on the shoots. So I was just on yeah. this... Um, Nike just relaunched their basketball thing with this big only basketball platform. Commercials are on TV now, so you may have seen them with like LeBron and his daughter and a bunch of other people. And so, like, people who I work with every single day were just chilling in LA with LeBron. And I was like, why don't I get to chill in LA with LeBron? That's cool. Or Devin. I ask the same question all the time. You get to hang with Sean and Alex in a virtual StreamYard portal. <laughs> Not talk. the same. <laughs> No, it's, it is. It is. Boring. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm cooler than LeBron. You might. Yeah, I've I've LeBron's, I've LeBron's shot. I've shot a lot more hoops. Is that the right term? No. Says the guy who can't even make a high five work. That's not fair. That was an American high five, and I I wasn't used to that. And I was drunk. I'm pretty sure. So let's leave that aside. Why are there? Why are sixteen people watching this? We are not giving any. The, yeah, the value's done. The value's <laughs> Just done talking absolute over. shite. Oh, uh, great! He can get part of the per first page of a book. It's because he wasn't spiking windows as a child. Yeah, like three times that happened. Let's not make it a whole thing. <laughs> um, it happened more than once. You had to. You had to fit in. Um, yeah, the pain to get the stuff out. Anyway, um, like, we'll make yeah. fun of you, but like, I, Alex, I get it. I, I understand where you're coming from, and I understand the difficulty in being brought up in a community and a world where there is not a whole lot of outlet, and there's a whole lot of internal strife. And oh, all you I want is dick. some something out there in the world to give you some kind of validation. And so you go searching for it in the wrong places. I understand sure. where that comes from. For sure. We spoke we've spoken about this before, I'm sure. And like yeah. I was a, I was a dick. I can turn around and say I was a dick, but I was a dick for a reason. And I know that's why I try that's also a similar reason why I try to point T kids and like teenagers now away from like that immediate comfort that comes from hanging out with people and looking up to people who are like assholes because i know it makes you feel like you're part of something and it makes you feel like oh shit yeah i know what i'm doing and the world is like this and i've got to think about anything else now like it's so ah, oh, it's it's not it's not good and you'll realize in a few years you know that it's a it's a it's fucking poison um but yeah, but go and smash windows and shit. Like, just try it for, you know, because then you can be on a stream later in your later years and say, yeah, I did that. And, and you know, you were doing around. so good into that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason. That's the only reason I would do it now is so I can fire my brow in later life and say, mm, yeah, I Alex, like, like we're that. your two dads and you just disappointed one of us. Yeah. So. I, uh, you guys are so you'd make such a good gay couple. There's a great. What? Do you remember that photo of you like sitting on your chairs? And yeah, I think one of you holding a guitar. Right yes, and I think Rod's holding a guitar, and like, and you're just, like looking up at the camera. It's great. It's yeah. like when you come home and like, you you tell your dads that you passed the English exam or something like that. <laughs> and you're both just like in the CC somewhere. And your somewhere. gay mixed race dad. 
ads are just like good job son. <laughs> yeah I'm gonna, one I'm gonna see if i can find it um <laughs> hang on i'm just typing <laughs> when your dad's in the cc and see if it comes up oh god i i'm not gonna maybe find maybe this. gay dads when you un 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 ironically though when your gay dads uh or maybe just when i don't know uh I'm See, one of the things that I like about making these kinds of jokes is that, like, it scares away people who, like, don't understand that we are joking and also scares away people that would be offended by those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. So. For sure. Like, I'm fine with that. I mean, I, I legitimately, Rod, like, you know, if I were single, you know, <laughs> I'd hit you up. If I were gay. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not even gay. I'd still hit you up. No, no. Sean's Sean slipped there. <laughs> Rod Rod knew the game. Rod was like, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm not admitting to that in public." Sean did. He came out with guns blazing. Like, if I was single. Sorry, sorry. I need to. I need to gay it up a little bit. <laughs> See, I'd have my black card revoked if I did that. It's true. That's yeah, true. <laughs> and that was a race joke. Oh, look at us. You're not allowed to make those. I can make gay jokes. Rod can make black jokes. What can you do, Sean? I can make bald jokes. Anything you want. There we go. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's, yeah. Right. Ooh. The damn white triarchy is not a word, but <laughs> whatever the equivalent of that is. See, this is where a vocabulary would help. Come on, guys. Help me out with this. White so man is gender hegemony, man. Gemini's so, a good fucking word. Literally, uh, like two, like a month ago, we had like basically anti discrimination training. And so for two days, I like sat through these eight hour days of just like Sorry. people telling me how to not be racist. And I don't know, I will, no, neither of you have done this anytime in the last couple of years, I'm sure. Um, and the thing that was so frustrating is like, it was like about race, but basically the whole thing was just like, um, Sean, you might be familiar with it. It was like using like anti-racism, like philosophy, which I didn't realize at first. And then I like kind of picked up and like, I like kind of was putting together pieces like, oh, this is so fucking stupid. And the word hegemony is like the word I feel like we need to like just replace in all these conversations because it's not actually something inherent to like white people specifically in this country. It's like if you are the sort of part of the status quo majority hegemonic culture in any country, the sorts of things we associate here with white privilege are going to apply to you. And so like we need to be able to extricate these conversations about quote unquote whiteness from just like these sort of de facto states that end up happening when you have a culture that it, and that ends up holding cultural power for long periods of time and rant. The only thing that could have made that story better is if you talked about how like there was like a, a like a white 40 year old five foot two woman who whenever she mentioned like <laughs> racial discrimination in the workplace like looked at you and nodded <laughs> <laughs> pats you on the back it's like well done yeah, Ron. like as in the like trying to buy validation from you Ron. <laughs> see the, the problem though is that like we're so far past that that now it's black people teaching these courses and then all of the white people are just like de facto nodding but i am um how do we put this racist faulty as fuck. Oh. and so when i don't like things i like will start like writing on whatever paper i have like why i don't like the thing because i'm like okay maybe like am i just hate? like literally wrote on a piece of paper like my notes am i just hating and then wrote out all the reasons why no i wasn't just hating and so by the end of these two days like i had like me 10 or 15 page of notes of why what they were telling us was so fucking stupid and so we'd have like lecture and then we have to get, do pair off into groups and do stuff and every single group i got into i was like basically saying yeah this is really fucking stupid for this 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 reason and the fun part is because the company is mostly white and i was often the only black person none of the people could really argue with me <laughs> or they'd try to argue with me and then like use all of the same logic or whatever to be like no this is a dumb no Rod, you are a victim of oppression you yeah. are a victim of the hegemony <laughs> yeah and, and so it, but like the craziest shit is that at the end of the two days i had multiple like white people i came up to or who uh, who were in my groups come up to me and were like i'm so glad that i was in your group because like after the first day or something, 
I felt like I was being like gaslit by all the things that were being said because it felt like way too simple or dumb or like, whatever. And I was like, this is the problem. That's crazy. That yeah, I, I've never been exposed to that two day. For me, the reason I started laughing at the beginning is because you said anti discrimination training, and that that's just a funny that's a funny phrase to me because in my head, I just like pictured someone shouting like a racial slur and then just going no and, like that's <laughs> like that's like the training it's like right good <laughs> that's that class done <laughs> move on it's like what how do you train i don't i don't get how you train that for so the, the real thing <laughs> maybe i'm cynical do, they're trying to like get people to like check their sort of biases and like let's say right okay. um you haven't been exposed to lots of different ethnicities of people like sometimes people will make jokes about like how food smells or kind of like make comments that aren't actually insults but might come across as insulting to somebody or might make someone feel isolated or whatever and particularly if you're like in a management or supervising position if you sort of have biases like that either you might say some things that people don't feel comfortable coming to talk to you about or things might happen around you and then you don't address a situation early and then it kind of gets worse and then some something b really bad happens because it's been allowed to go on for a long time so they want people to do that um of course the real thing isn't <laughs> that they want this to happen just because just because they they love everybody and want people to feel great it's also because they want to avoid lawsuits and so like having people step into these situations to avoid them becoming situations in the first place is really important in like a corporate environment yeah a, a yeah. big thing with large corporations in America is that if they do not actively try to suppress anything that could be remotely construed as discrimination or discriminatory policies, they can be liable in a lawsuit or a class action lawsuit about like if anybody ever encounters that. Yeah. Like like that company could be held liable for somebody's individual experience because the company didn't do enough to try to tamp that shit out yeah so it's like sometimes it's valid sometimes it's not like yeah it's yeah. i mean it's it's a very muddy and murky and very subjective world and rod i'm sorry that you had to go through that but at the same time like i'm i am also glad that some of the white people were in those groups with you <laughs> see um and and so I'm not just salty. I'm, I'm a very salty person. And so following that, I, of course, made a point to, like, then have, like, a meeting with our one of our HR people and be like, hey, who is a black woman? And I was like, this is, like, really problematic. And, like, yada, yada, yada. And we had, like, a whole ass conversation about it. And she was like, yeah, you should definitely talk to, like, our DI person. And so, you know. Yeah. I, that, that, that's, I, I think it's important to do that. I think inherently, I don't have an, I'm, I don't have an opinion about, like, anti-discrimination generally like um i mean it's bad but i don't have an opinion about anti-discrimination training generally but like what i mean is like i think it's so subjective like to each individual e even within a group of any kind like it's so subjective that how can you possibly do something that's representative outside of legal limits which like well yeah you know you shouldn't incite hate speech and you shouldn't like exclude or segregate someone because of x y and z outside of that like it just comes down to opinions i guess of an individual um yeah so it's hard it's really hard yeah i i, I think the real thing is like the, the real problem with the way that these conversations happen now is that like like you said it is so personal but it's hard to explain to give an ad adequate explanation for all of the nuances that can possibly exist. And so what we end up doing is we take it to this really simplistic level that um, is really infantilizing for white people generally. And so they start to check out like literally a, a few weeks after this happened, I ran into one of like my white male coworkers who I had only met in this thing in the grocery store. I didn't recognize him. He's like, Hey, do you work at this company? And I was like, Oh yeah. He's like, Oh yeah. I was in your group at like that stupid anti-racism thing. And I was like, well, yeah, it was stupid, but also it's really bad if we had spent two work days doing this and then your employee's takeaway is to refer to it as that stupid anti-racism thing. Like, clearly yeah. that did not leave the lasting effect if you, this dude thought it was stupid as hell. Um, yeah. So, like, on that level, it's, like, infantilizing in, like, all the worst ways. But, but then also for 
if you're like a person of color, it's like super disempowering because the way in which they spin it is like everything that's happening isn't your fault and it's the fault of white people or whatever. And the only sort of like logical conclusion you can come to is that like you won't stop being oppressed until white people stop oppressing you. And so that means you can't, you won't ever actually be empowered until like white people stop being mean. And that's like, maybe there's like a, there's a grain of truth in that, but also like, what the fuck is someone supposed to do with that? And how is someone going to feel unable to make choices and have any degree of agency within a space in which they may not be oppressed as much as they, as you are telling them what they are, if you tell them that they can't do anything. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's pretty, that's bad. Yeah. yeah. Fucking, and it's, well, it's not Nike, but you know, the ad agency while tackling this. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, <laughs> yeah. It's like, if I, this is more important and should perhaps be tackled at a younger age when, brains are more plastic yeah yeah i i mean listen rod you've heard me and my spiel about it very many times i i'm actually thinking about doing uh and i talked to you about this a video yeah. DIY wealth where the art like the title of the video is legitimately like you know <laughs> white people should only hire minorities in their businesses and like have that be a sort of introduction to a larger much more uncomfortable conversation that a lot of white people aren't really ready to have about these issues in the u.s especially they're Mm -hmm. they're so very nervous about this kind of stuff and what i i think people need to start realizing is that you can like be realistic about people's experiences when it comes to race like but then also like still be an ally yeah yeah and also like i think there's there has been a degree of cultural evolution obviously it's not the same everywhere in the country or you know certainly not across the planet but like there are definitely places in which people of all races are equipped or like able to engage in these conversations in like a deeper way like when I would say things that were like more difficult or challenging or something about my experiences to, to white people, like they were able to just like grapple with those nuances, not always perfectly, but like certainly in a much more useful way than me being like, yeah, you're complicit in racism and I'm oppressed and I can't do anything because of you. Yeah. Well, that's tough. You know, yeah. I like, I will admit to, um, like a little bit of white guilt. <laughs> so for the she- the se- sheer and simple fact, like that I feel this way for the sheer and simple fact that I also feel a degree of, how should I say, um, guilt about having a lot as opposed to like basically like being rich, being white, being having a lot of other privileges. For me, because I'm a caring human being, I look at other people struggling and I go like, oh man like i wish there was more that i could do that didn't also like disadvantage me or my family if i wanted to try to help those people Mm -hmm. but like ultimately what we're talking about here are like larger systemic issues things that like yeah like i have maybe the the tiniest margin of agency over and i don't know like i i don't know what the, the the solution is um I certainly don't think that I'm going to be the person who's going to crack racism in America. So, unironically, I mean, just like looking at the political landscape of these things, I I feel like as things become more polarized, I feel like there are opportunities, particularly like in like the center left, for people to kind of step in and appeal to like the reasonable left and be like, okay, look. We know you care. We know things have gotten a little crazy. Let's have some real ass adult conversations because we know you want to be adults and can't take like the rhetoric of like some of like the more extreme left elements seriously. We're going to open up space for that. We're not going to be judgmental. We're going to invite you to the table. We're going to talk to you like you're not a fucking child. Um, as things get weirder, I feel like that's going to be an increasingly like big opportunity for people who want to take care. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, 
it's an in- we spoke about this when I when I came to the states. It's a it's an interesting one looking looking in at it from from the outside, just being mm. in a different country. Because you, like. Britain, weirdly, like I think, I think Britain is is more white than America in terms of actual percentage, but mm. like in terms of multiculturalism and how integrated, like the UK feels way more integrated than the US does, mm-hmm. um, like just just from being there, you know, um, and the culture I feel like in the UK is far more it, race matters far less than like where you come from in the country, you know, like yeah. what town you were brought up in. You know, so like I, to me, to me, like it's never, and this is where I may be complicit in it because I never even saw it as an issue. Like to me, I, you know, my class just in school was, you know, half like minorities, if you want, not, not technically a minority in that sense, I guess, but like, you know, um, it wasn't even a thing. It wasn't even addressed when I was a kid because it wasn't even like a thing you considered. It's just, oh yeah, like that's Gaurav, um, you know, like, uh, like that's Miles, that's that's Luke. You know, they, they're just they're just kids. They're just friends. Um, and it's and it's really weird. And I don't know. I don't know. If I, well, I mean, obviously, I feel like Americans probably suffered more from segregation and the and the the type. You know, of that those kind of issues than the UK has. There's obviously still racism everywhere, um, but I certainly never felt it so viscerally as when I went to the US and like heard people speak about like the way you guys speak about it is so like it's so serious and i don't mean that in a i don't mean that in a way to like downplay how serious it actually is but like in america it's such a massive issue Mm -hmm. in the uk it's more like it's 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 hardly ever racism you know that comes up it's usually like uh class more than it is race for example yeah i think that's, that's a fair assessment I, I mean, Britain sort of embodies something that underlies, I think, a lot of the conversations that Rod and I have, which is that, like, the, the truest privilege is green privilege. Let's be real. Yep. Like, you know, that I on DIY Wealth, I actually I had a video where I talked about, like, what like what actually communicates, like, delivers wealth from one generation to another. And one of the studies that I cite actually looked at... Um, the discrepancies between wealth that is transmitted among white families versus wealth that is transmitted among African-American families. And like the data paints a very clear picture up to a point, which is that like what you find is that you have more of a transmission of wealth for white people, like almost at a 45 degree angle. Whereas for black people, it's clearly lacking until you get above a certain threshold of wealth and then it be then all the very rich black people transmit money at the same rate and with the same level of success as white people mm-hmm. like it's just like the data and the numbers are just so like okay like we can kind of see what's happening here one like there are systemic and historical disadvantages that are at play in the society but two money kind of paints over a lot of it <laughs> and like kind of bridges that gap in a way that I think a lot of people are really uncomfortable about talking about. Yeah. So. I, I, it's so, again, I, I, go, I can only speak from the UK, but the industry that I work in for most of my time now is, is pharmacy mm-hmm. in the UK. And if you look at pharmacy in the UK and the, the, um, uh, uh, the ethnicities of pharmacy owners, it's, um, I believe, Forty percent um, Asian, so that's like uh, Indian, Pakistani, um, and, and then like uh, also from East Asia, uh, and then it's like thirty-eight percent white, um, and you see that in quite a few. Also, like what we call corner shops, so like small local independent shops, massively um, like Asian and uh, and, and black, and. Um, that has been there's a lot of business and there's a lot of wealth through the generation so that point may hold up here sean as well because you know our prime minister is 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 british asian you know like and he's 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 rich he's mega rich uh so i I, yeah money yeah money you know maybe marx was right about some stuff (laughs) yeah go go earn money didn't he say something like that 
Like yeah. <laughs> here I am, like talking about like you know Marxism and uh, oh, also by the way, my other channel is DIY Wealth. Like learn how to be a really good capitalist. <laughs> <sighs> I yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I was still thrown that. Like, I, I f feel like socialism is a cope a lot of the time, or at least, like, the version that gets, like, circulated or proselytized in, like, leftist circles where, like, the problem to me is not the economic system so much as, like, the willingness for people to actually be involved in said systems to the extent that we all, that, like, people are comfort seeking beings that just want kind of want to do their own thing and just like let shit happen to them P more interested individual individuals will always be able to like extricate like surplus value or whatever from them for their own means and like well socialism if you could get it working in whatever way you imagine it working might make some things like might average out some degree of like wealth or maybe not income and quality I can't imagine that you wouldn't still have rich people. You still wouldn't have the same sorts of like inequities that like we still, that we are like currently suffering. Yeah. yeah. Listen, just... anybody who's played with a Monte Carlo simulator knows that there's just going to be some elements of any sort of stochastic system that end yeah. up with more than others. Yeah. Like unless you are like actively like creating a parameter to limit people's growth or decline, any stochastic system that allows for like things to grow or fall by any sort of like random means, you're always going to have winners and losers. Yeah. It just happens like naturally, organically. Um, I think my biggest issue, if I were to like name it, like because you know I've read Marxist theory, I've read socialist theory, I've read capitalist theory. Um, I'm, I tend to agree with a lot of the critiques of capitalism, but I would say that the ones that are more correct are the ones that critique corporatocracy than capitalism. Yeah. So basically any system or situation where you can have corporations that literally can put their thumb on the scales of the judicial system, the political system, anything, you know, regulatory capture, for example, mm -hmm. When that is allowed, it's not a true capitalist system anymore. It yeah. becomes an oligarchy. It becomes a system wherein a few people have control over the system of governance that controls everybody else. And like capitalism, the whole point of capitalism is to let people be and figure stuff out on their own and grow and like enjoy what they are able to do by their own merit. Uh, and of course, there are limitations in there. And of course, like some things need to be like tipped a little bit one way or another. Um, but yeah, uh, that's severely it's the, damaged. It's the, um, yeah, monopoly is the enemy of liberty. Like they, one of them said that. The one, like one of the fucking, you know, Milton Haynes, someone, one of those dudes. Smith. Um, Smith, yeah, you know. But the thing I would say is like, if you want to make sure you're on the winning side, you should probably go and buy copy that's complete marketing strategy course because <laughs> it literally tells you what you need to identify offers and get to <laughs> selling that in a successful repeatable. <laughs> this was a whole people watching this us. whole conversation was just a marketing <laughs> ploy. <laughs> <laughs> So if you wanna if you wanna know more about the, the true nature of man and, and and racism and and capitalist success, then yeah, I'd go and buy that. But that's just me. God. Uh, I feel so scummy. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to end with a CTA. We always tell people end with a CTA. End with a CTA. Oh. I I wanna add one thing to that, not to your fucking cta <laughs> i'm sorry what the, no, i'm the, sorry not, not to that all cta that is i will i will clean it work the claim ownership for that it's funny i i almost feel like i, I like the quote the uh Mono was it monopoly is like the enemy of liberty or whatever uh i almost feel like it's not that it's like metagaming is the enemy of liberty because if all these like companies were to just like play the game like the economic game and like play the market itself 
it would be fine. The problem is then, like, when they start realizing, oh, if we can, like, shift regulations and influence people, like, lobby, whatever, whatever, that's what makes things fucky because that is not a market that people can play in the same way or that there's equal access to. And so, like, if the lobbying market were free, theoretically, kind of, sort of, I don't know how I feel about Citizens United, um, like, maybe that the situation is, like, different, but as things stand, it's not equal and it kind of sucks. Yeah. America, yeah. it's great, but also it kind of sucks. It's probably our, those links should all be in our description right now, right? Uh, yeah, I, I put them in there. <laughs> okay, great. I'm I am good at CTA. Thank you. I am do dude in CTA. I am people. do CTA. I'm Guys, so tired. This was a lovely chat. Like <laughs> this was an hour that we were just kind of shit posting and talking and like chatting with each other that we we technically could have probably gotten through all the other. That, that's what I was thinking just then when people. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're on, we were like, yeah, oh, the, the problem with doing this live is we don't always get to all the copy. Like we'll, we'll chat shit about you know Wyden and Kennedy's <laughs> like race policy. <laughs> <laughs> and and the problems with with like syndicalism and corporatism. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't think we touched on syndicalism, but no. Well, on that note, I'm gonna go back to work for uh, four minutes and then go home. Yeah. <sighs> All right, that that's capitalism. That's, that's capitalism. That's capitalism at work. <laughs> Pure merit, uh, guys. Have a. Alex, sleep well. Rod, have a lovely rest of your day. I am going to go finish a newsletter about the power of compound interest. <laughs> That's capitalism. All right. Goodbye, guys. All right. Take care. Peace. See ya.